It's Tuesday, oh, no. April 9th. 2024 that was my best jan ochoa impression because my name is jeff bagelar and this is the giant bombcast we are powered by nzxt and we've got jan and dan reichert on assignment in a city made famous by a a single fictional boxer that's what they have but that's all they have their absence (laughs) is felt but it is filled by a threesome of fine folks starting with the one and only Jeff Grubb. That was a Jana Choa impression? I don't know. You know, <laughs> my allergies have, like, really kicked in this morning. And I I tried to it make it last. it wasn't perverted enough to be a Jana Choa impression. That's Ooh, my big complaint good, there. Good yeah. We'll yeah. get to perversions in just a little bit. Uh, you're doing well, I find it? Doing great, yeah. Doing real well. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to be back on the Bombcast. Uh Played a played a video game for everybody. I, I didn't finish putting together the news, so that's going to be a fun section. It's going to be a good time. All right. Well, we'll see if we have time for video games, but we're going to talk to Nikki Grayson next. How are you? Hello. I'm good. It's nice out. It's going to be 75 today. Ooh. The fact that it will be warmer in New Jersey brings me great pain. <laughs> yep. It was. It's warmer here too, and it sucks. <laughs> Fine, we will pivot to the uh, to the last person <laughs> on the program today. Turbo Sean, how are you? Uh, probably colder than the rest of y'all up here in Wisconsin. And uh, let me just say, your Jan needs some Metamucil. Mm-hmm. Good God. <laughs> yeah, uh, that really, you could feel everyone just sort of turning off their podcast, couldn't you? You could <laughs> yeah. feel everyone just but being like, the- we'll fix in post. We'll fix I'll skip, it. It's I'll fine. skip Bombcast this week. But here's the thing, we already got him. Yeah, we, already yeah, got, yeah. we already got the download, so it doesn't even fucking matter. That's true. Right. You hit play, we can't we can't see how far you get. That's right. That's uh, RSS. Yeah, I don't I feel like it's it's evolved a little bit beyond that, but sure. Shockingly you know? not. No. Uh, <laughs> not for the not for the RSS <laughs> feed. Spotify <laughs> tries to. Spotify yeah, can Spotify do, but if it's no. in the RSS. Listen, we got you. So hey, hey, Spotify's right. cops. We don't care what they yeah, do. Exactly. About. Spotify knows. Spotify fucking um, cops. Look, everyone, the sun, the moon, they fucked. Mm-hmm. Okay? They banged, and in their fuckery, a shadow was cast. And that shadow gave birth to a grublet. Isn't it, that right, Jeff Grubb? That, that's uh, how it works. That's the story that I read every night before bed. That's right. Um, uh, yeah, I, I was. that shadow was right on top of me. It got, it got up in my business, and it was incredible. It actually really did blow my mind. Uh, I was expecting it to be very cool. Um, I've seen some like uh, annular total eclipses where it's like there's still that ring of fire. So what a- mm-hmm. annular 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 is not a perfect solar eclipse. right. So right? so a total uh, yeah, a total uh, eclipse uh, is it, it blocks the whole thing. An annular solar eclipse is where it doesn't quite like it, it is covering the sun, but there's still that ring of fire because it's like 98. percent It's not fully covering that, and that's when the moon's further away, so it looks smaller to us. Um, yeah. So this was a total eclipse and it, it really did block it out and it got much darker than I was expecting. Uh, I could see uh, Jupiter. I could see Venus. Um, and it was just, kind of, it was mesmerizing. It was three and a half minutes. It really did blow me away. I'm very jealous. Eclipses are incredibly cool. Mm-hmm. There's something sort of like, there's something a little sort of like selfish about an eclipse. Do you know what I mean? No, I don't. Please tell me more. <laughs> the way I look at an eclipse is sort of just like, Right place, right time. Oh, you know? for sure. And Absolutely. you're just like, and you're just like, hey, like we're here, and it's only happening for us in this little 150 mile wide sort of roadway True. that went northeast up this country, and it's just such a weird thing that these celestial bodies just sort of like cast shadows. I mean, it's especially weird their thing. It's amazing if you think about it. Um, most moons on most for the most of the other planets in our solar system wouldn't work this way because it's uh the moon is going to look much uh, uh right uh, like much smaller compared to the yeah. sun uh because they're usually exactly. further away and our, our our moon is like when it's at this distance is uh, uh like 400 times closer than the sun and the sun is right. 400 times bigger than it so it's like they lined up 
perfectly in it. That is, yeah. a, you know, a lot of things are like, hey, that's a cosmic accident. It's like, no, nah, that's just the way life works. Eventually, it just kind of fills in all these gaps. This is one of those cosmic accidents that's like, we just lucked out, and that's the way it that's, works. That's sort yeah. of thing with yeah. this sort of cosmic or, luck. It has and, to be an accident, because how the fuck did Ohio get the best of it? <laughs> yeah, the right. next, one, next one's in Iceland. Uh, or at least yes. the next one that's like people can con yeah. con conceivably then, get to. Shout and then after that, two years from now is crossing over Spain, and I'm like, it, that, so, that was that was Spain so and Iceland, yes. Oh, it's, yeah. it's the same one. Yeah, we're I'm talking so about going to Iceland to get now. Out there. Yeah, Steph, yeah, I would Steph go to Spain. Really into it. She's like, we, we should like go. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll go to Iceland. Let's, Let's do it. I would like because well, you've do seen that. the real thing, so yeah, that makes sense. I was like thoroughly uninterested, like not giving a shit in the world. Then you posted that pic, Rob. I'm like, oh, that probably was really cool in person. Yeah, and it's, I heard the pic is close to it, but man, it really does. Yeah, just yeah, look. I can't imagine. Right. And we like had a, about ninety like percent wallpaper you download for your background of your computer in yeah. 1995. Like that's how cool yeah. it looked. We had uh, we had about ninety percent. I. You know, it got darker for sure, but like you still, you could mistake it for an overcast day. It yeah, wasn't anything sure. like really weird. It yeah. definitely got like a little cooler for sure. Yeah, that's actually and the most messed up it part. Just... It's like, man, the sun is important. <laughs> hey, that would work. If that would <laughs> away, that it'd get real cold. <laughs> Turns out we're fucked Warm sun go it. away, it get cold is what I noticed about yesterday. It... But it really was fascinating where you're just sort of like, so, you know, it around 320, it was like where it was covering the most. And uh, we 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 saw we were able to see the sky with no clouds, and I was looking through the glasses, and I, I was like, "Wow, that's wild!" And then it got really overcast, really fast. A big wave of clouds came in to the point where the glasses couldn't see the sun anymore. Oh, that's a right? uh, No, but here's what was cool: like again, I did not stare at the sun, but like it was so cloudy that you sort of you were able to kind of like see it in your periphery, right? You were yeah, able to see a crescent sure. of the sun in your oh, periphery, cool. which I thought mm. was like so fucking wild. Yeah. And it, it was really, really a special thing, but you're right. Like that's when I talk about it being selfish, right? Like it, we are lucky that the moon is the size it is, right? Mm. If it was a bigger moon, it wouldn't, or smaller moon, it would probably just be like a bullseye or like, on the sun. You know, right? Further away. Yeah. Bunch right. Of, or like whatever it is. That, yeah. All these amazing sort of, uh, things have to line up for this to work out. It also feels it's pretty sick. It, yeah, it also feels so primitive yeah. too. Like, <laughs> the, like in a way that is like we is kind of sick. Like, I yeah. everyone I knew was outside looking at the big ball in the sky. Uh huh. Totally. <laughs> and like well, that. own oh, like that's so sick. Like, it's it's awesome that we've we've developed technologies such that we can look at it because we only got like fifty five percent here mm -hmm. in L A. just because of it's a globe did you know the right. earth is round eh, that's what they say no that's ah. not what this proved this did not prove that okay so in, in any case, <laughs> <laughs> we only got some of it but it still was like it was fucking sick i was like it is nuts that like i the perspective that i have on this event that is also happening at the same time it's three thousand miles away is so fundamentally different, but sure. also still the same thing. Like it, it's just really, it's a really cool bonding experience from like a humanity perspective. Um, yes. It's very yeah, we nice. all and, forgot and our problems for a minute. And for a second, just, yeah. for like yeah, for a, a good second. ninety seconds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was it was very You're communal. Right, it, there was there was a lot yes. of cheering when it happened. Uh, yeah, it, like and like, I, the moment well, of the totality is when it especially it was like when people yeah, were actually like, sure. oh my god, because it yeah. This morning difference. I was just watching TikToks of like people cry, like weeping. Yeah. Like when it and I was like, yeah, like fuck yeah, actually. Yes. Okay. I don't know if I would cry at it, but look, you react the way you want to. That's <laughs> yeah. beautiful. It, it's beautiful it, in it your did, own like, way. Right? It made me a little emotional, yeah. It made me feel like sure. small and yet part of something. It's like, oh my God, like I am I'm standing here. That thing has to be there. The earth has to be here. The yeah. sun has to be mm -hmm. there. And it's like all those other planets are also like in perfect alignment to the sides of it. Right. Uh, it just felt uh yeah. you know, cosmically yeah. special. Yeah, and then that you could see how like you know science uh, scientists and like going back for a very long time have been able to predict eclipses oh for sure that, that like information was guarded by the by the elite and they would use that to to keep people in line and be like hey if you don't like come to, to our church or whatever if you don't come to the temple uh, i'm gonna blot out the sun and then yeah, take the and sun away. yeah and that's why i got a little mad at the eclipse sure, um, sure yeah uh, blame uh, the eclipse. i got mad it's victim because blaming. i saw well, I saw, the eclipse. <laughs> I saw the eclipse and I was like, you know what? 
motherfuckers like 2,000 years ago. This is really the source of all of our problems, isn't it? This is yeah. certainly why people were able to take advantage of each other. Yeah, and part just of it. Not be able just... to explain it in any reasonable way. And instead, uh, you know, maybe came up with something uh, insane to control people with. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. That, that smallness that you mentioned, Grub, is like this shit would be ha- obviously would be happening if we were here or not mm-hmm. yes. right so it's like yeah it is it is beautiful yes that we are here to experience it but also being able to control the information about the thing that is happening becomes so important yep. because again if the sun went away <laughs> it would be crazy <laughs> 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 Yeah, it wouldn't, well, we wouldn't but, last yeah. too long, but yeah, we last eight yeah. minutes until the sun, until the gravitational pull of, of the oh, sun went away. Three servings of tuna in eight yeah. minutes. <laughs> Look, I saw yeah. the documentary Sunshine. I know what happens when we have to <laughs> reboot the sun. I, d- I did go inside, out. and then my cat was sleeping the whole time. So it's like, okay, so some parts of nature respond to it. The birds were Bro, freaking I, out. Yeah, I love that fucking cat. That, he's, he's just a, like the. Big he's you, but a cat. Yes. He's just like, <laughs> yeah. he just chills and then he wanders over. He's like, sup, dude? And yep. he wants to hang out for a second and then just wanders back. That's exactly I thought right. I a cat was just Garfield. Is that not? Well, I, mean, I love that Mondays. That's, that's basically the, difference. the cat. Like, I could do Game Mess Morning with uh, Emma on Monday, so I love it. I don't know what you're talking mm-hmm. about. Uh, <laughs> what, I, we didn't really get much, like, no, even in 80%, we didn't get, like, shit changing. 80, for, 80% it, is cool to see, like, when you see it, right? You looked at it, right? Did you not, Sean? Uh, no, because I just didn't. Well, you didn't go outside? You didn't go outside? I was yes, outside. Are you, Did you are have you the Char- glasses? Are you Charles nah. Barkley? Well, because I've seen one before with the same amount of totality. And I was like, eh. Been there, done that? Yeah, it, it, it's something I've seen go. before. So I was like, yeah, whatever. I'm not going to go out of my way to wow. stop it. Motherfucking Charles Barkley last night during the NCAA finals was basically calling everyone who looked at the eclipse a fucking loser. <laughs> no, I, I won't say that. Charles Barkley was basically rules. like, <laughs> someone was like, oh, did you see the eclipse, Charles? And he's like, what am I, a fucking loser? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe, I was like, man, I really love his takes on hockey. He's a huge, ho- he's an arguably he bigger hockey, hockey fan than he is basketball. And he's like, Eclipses are for fucking nerds. For losers. Where was he He's at? Like, I've touched a boob before. I don't need to go. I don't need to go look at the sun for an hour and a half. They were like, in wow. Phoenix. Okay. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There you go. But, uh, but anyways, anyways, because for me, you know, it's, it's it was like a cloud passed over. Basically, that that that's like the change that happened. It was already a cloudy day, so it was sure. whatever. I didn't notice one weird thing that I never thought about. Um. Because I'm just mind my own business doing, you know, like running some errands. I look at the ground. I, I noticed shadows looked weird. Yes. The yeah. yes. I never thought to like. Especially like a pinhole shadow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It was. Uh, it's not really noticeable on like big ones, like buildings and cars and stuff, but like thin ones. I noticed it because I saw the uh, the shadow of a power line and it looked like a streak. It was yes. like. Like for the tech heads in the room, you know when like a DLSS or like some other upscaling in video games like breaks down, yeah. And there's yeah. like a trail <laughs> behind the God yeah. rays rendered oddly yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I was like, oh, I'm seeing this like video game thing in real life. That's why. <laughs> but I, I don't know. So I guess weird. because it's like technically multiple light sources or something. I don't know exactly how it works. But I yeah, think it's because like, the lights bending this... around the moon a little bit more than yeah. Ma- yes. Maybe yeah. yeah. But whatever it was, it, there was like it wasn't even like even. It was almost like I know some of them had like a slight stagger. It was really weird but yeah that, that was that was a cool thing i was like oh that's that's more interesting where the hell's going up oh, yeah over there <laughs> yeah i it, it like it started looking strange outside at about like it started looking strange outside like around 80 percent. but it starts looking like abnormal like you don't see this any other time like you're right it's cloudy day up until about 80 percent. then i like start, took the glasses off looked around at like 90 percent, and it looked like an alien planet um so that, okay. that was pretty neat and and then but really it, it is all about the totality that moment w- is the thing i yeah, will remember seems for like. sure yes yeah and then actually not. seeing the Pain. seeing the like the little line uh, of like the, the you know the the um crescent like get smaller like in real yeah, time because that it was, part was that yeah. part was thick even at 55%. right because you could see the very tippy corners of them like getting like just yeah. a little bit smaller and so having both of those mm-hmm. going and then having it like completely disappear in one moment and then just uh looking around and be like oh my god it's completely different than it just was yeah 
Mike Minotti's in chat uh, talking about how it was like a religious experience for him. <laughs> for sure. It was incredible. Like, it blew Legitimately, yeah. yeah. Like, I, 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 I sure totally it. get it. Yeah. Um, shout it's out to like the local this, library. It's like glasses. this drug that you have to travel to do. I mean, it's, it's like, like legit, the Steph's legit talking about Iceland, and I'm like, yes, I, I'm Dude, I'm not down. joking. We were, we were talking about it last night, and I think I must have told Dib, and he was like, can we go with Grub's family to Iceland? And I was like, yeah, yes. we should. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Like we yep. absolutely should because I want to go to Iceland. Number one, number two. If there's going to be an eclipse there, then like why not? Yep. Although it's going to be really crowded because of that. Yeah, but, but that's well, that's why we're choosing Iceland and not Spain because all the European oh, tourists will smart. go to Spain. Oh, yeah, uh, Iceland's I mean, still going to be crowded. East coasters, but yeah, the, all the East Spain coasters will, are going to go to. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. but man, yeah. Spain will be way worse. Well, well, it's fine. Uh, Mike is also suggesting we go to Disney World in 20 years for the next U.S. one, and I could not disagree more with that suggestion. I Mike, you keep me alive. Be... I'll go with you. All right. It'll be under. Wouldn't it be underwater in 20 <laughs> years? True. <laughs> oh, we're gonna get on a boat. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Your beachfront property. <laughs> Only the tip of the Magic Kingdom <laughs> will be able to be seen be from where we will be. That's it. Uh, speaking of Minati, I just wanted to touch on something real fast. Oh, It's a Jurassic Park thing. Mm. It's a Jurassic oh, Park geez. thing that I came into yeah. contact with. Uh, Jeff Grubb, could you unpack this? I just want to talk about this real quick. I know it's a video game podcast, and I you know how much I like to talk about video games, but I just want to You're talk about it. this Jurassic Park. <laughs> famously famous for it yeah uh i just want to talk about this jurassic park thing really really quick please yeah yeah so uh our friend ben hansen uh over at the min max show uh has an mm. opinion that is factually incorrect <laughs> yes yeah. i'm not uh, sure know, it's I even an opinion think, it's just being in the wrong so, yeah, yeah i so think we need to lean into uh, telling people when they are just fucking incorrect all right so yeah. i i, I, ha I have go, like, go on, Grub, yeah. i have the clip it's important to talk about like they were just talking about the flea circus that he had that was his first attraction john hammond and he's like you know it was an illusion but people bought into it and she's like yeah it was an illusion. So is this. So is your sense of control over this entire place, uh, right. like and and the power that you have over it. That's an illusion. And then here, here you guys should hear this. Let me turn it up. Overwhelmed by yeah, the make... power of this place, but I made a mistake too. I didn't have enough respect for that power, and it's out now. This line. All right. So then Ben, okay. ben goes on. I I can't. I, I didn't watch this episode. I just saw this clip. I'm. I want to go watch the episode. I was watching a bunch of their clips yeah, on I, Instagram. I gotta, I gotta listen to it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh. But yeah. I think he's like reading an email. But he, he basically says he agrees that when he, she says it's out now, referring to a, a power, uh, that power. He believes that they are all like referring. Yes, they're referring to the metaphorical bit, but they are shifting to talk about the electricity at the park, which is why. So no. Fucking no. insane. Why would For she audio do listeners, that? Jeff Backlot grabbed his head. Nikki is shaking their fist. Sean is shaking his head. It is. This is how I feel. I'm so glad for all. Thank you it all so much. Just such a weird conclusion to draw. It's like, not weird when I, you're eight. It's weird when you yes, become an adult and, and later you're like, oh, I, I just misunderstood. I yeah. tweeted back at it. I replied. I was like, look, I saw this movie when I was like 11 or 12 for the first time. And even that didn't occur to me th at that time, but I could be a little charitable <laughs> and say that like, oh, maybe because you're just like a young, dumb kid, you instantly think that, you know, she's talking about electricity in that moment. But of course not. Okay. Of course not. I, because the power is of playing God. Right. Yeah. Right? Some people yeah. are arguing That's that the they're, power. Lot, most people are trying to argue that she is do, like she's doing a little fun play on words or maybe, Double the, on or okay. maybe the writer is. And that's First also of all, wrong. We've run. We've run multiple polls. No, not most people are saying that. Overwhelmingly, everyone polls. agrees with us. I haven't seen any polls. Is that real? Okay, yeah. good. That's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. It's like you combine no and both, and it's like maybe a quarter of the vote. Mm. I don't. I don't think it's a double entendre Definitely because it, it would be a the, sad, the, no, it would be, of sense, yeah, right? But it but would even be, so, not. But it would be nuts for her to try yes. to force one in that conversation yes, right. specifically that she is having with John Hammond. <laughs> yes. If she John was Hammond. trying to get a joke in there like that, that's crazy. <laughs> Which is insane. <laughs> correct. Like imagine John Hammond was like, "Just be sure we're talking about what I, what I did here, right? <laughs> we're talking about what I did here, not about the problem of like literal electricity and like all the all the." Is going down, right? Just to be yeah, sure. Like, she, 
she would never do that. It, just for like as a person, that character would not do that. And the, and the, writer, so and the writer, the writer also wouldn't do it, and Steven Spielberg wouldn't do it because exactly. they are talking about exactly. a power of nature that is being unleashed and in this thing you can't control and that is such a, a completely opposite idea of and yes. we have electricity and we no longer can use it it has become incapacitated right. one goes up the yeah. other goes down you cannot actually make those puns work together or that pun work no. together as one idea it's an illegal it's illegal to try and make them work yeah, you, together, right? like, like it is yeah. almost no competent person is. getting paid in hollywood to write or make a movie would try to do that they weren't trying to that do that pun would just be an isolated thought it doesn't go anywhere yeah. yes part right. of the plot of the movie is getting even, power back on but like it doesn't you go clip anywhere. it out in the way that they did it's still almost impossible to infer it in the way that ben does yep i don't understand it would be uh, truly sicko mode for it to be that lord dern was acting way too serious in that moment how could you look also, I, the, 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 I the power it. had been out for quite some time at this yes point. this yeah. was not the thing at the table yeah. that they were discussing yeah. in that moment. Yeah. It's not what was happening. I just found that to be so amazing that we had to touch on it because holy shit balls. That oh, was... well, we have to touch on it because Ben listens. Hi, Ben. Right? We <laughs> need to tell you that you're wrong. <laughs> no, this Love was you, not just to take Ben down. I just found it to be such a funny it, thing. It just so happened it came out of Ben's mouth. I would have let it go uh, pretty quickly after posting it, but then there were people that were like, I think Ben's right. Well, I think well, he's onto something. Yeah, who were the, who were those people? Do you I don't know, know how it, it, Emma, it Emma Ben Fife said so. Just, we should have a we should have an employee review with oh, Emma about this. Emma, Emma, Emma's canceled. Yeah, Emma's yeah. canceled. Do you Emma know how real? Emma for real? Do you Emma know how wrong you have to be to get Austin to roll out? Yeah. Um, his yeah. like hosting prison that he puts yeah. him in <laughs> to be like you're day. being fucking dumb right now. Do you know how hard that is? Yeah. Wait, like, Austin who? Austin Walker? Yeah, Austin he's Walker. in the replies. Yeah. Oh, he, I didn't know he chimed in. He's very eloquent you, replies. If you get my man Austin Walker to come out and be like, "Hey, listen, folks, we can't do this." Like you fucked up. Like if you just have fucked up, yeah. it's yeah. so true. Uh, and Dave Lang, honestly, to be like. Talk yeah. about anything other than shit posting. Uh, Austin <laughs> says, "Out like free, out like out of its cage." The power (parentheses) the sublime might of dinosaurs and the incredible hubristic science which wrought them out of time is no longer contained. In fact, that containment was always an illusion, which is how this line actually starts. Yeah, <laughs> Austin, you got it Perfect. for sure. Yeah, you got yeah. it. Like, yeah, like if you have to get him to turn his brain on such that he does <laughs> this to you, you've made a mistake. Okay, wow. to be fair, Ben replied to that like, "Oh, this isn't looking good for me." <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ben. <laughs> yeah, Ben. It's <laughs> not. Austin, <laughs> you are being my ass in the quote. Wait, wait a second. I don't think I could put that toothpaste <laughs> back in the tube. <laughs> That's Do we awesome. know what Dan thinks about this? By the way, no, I'm really no. Nah, it's too late. It's too late. He, like the situation's compromised. Like, you, you we think can't he's been burn... contaminated. Yeah. I think he would yeah, admit. Can't... I, I... So, so we no, don't. We don't. Like we no, don't. Okay. Know. I think, so I think he'd get it right. I so think when he'd I get it, right. I posted this to Twitter. I'm glad I had this opportunity. When I posted this to yeah. Twitter, I said this is more bananas than anything Dan Riker has ever said, and I stand by right. that for one yeah, reason. I think that's that's sure. fair. For one reason, because when Dan mm. says something insane or does something insane it's because he's do mm -hmm. attempting something he has had zero interest in and his whole thing is if he has zero interest in it, he, it like it's like it doesn't exist to him and i get why that some people are like no that's crazy how can you live your life that, that way but i've come to understand that for this this is something ben is active he's making a podcast about this he's actively <laughs> engaged they're he, they just watched the movie they're talking about it and he seems to deeply care about it to then have this conclusion I'm like ben what movie were you watching bud what's going on here yeah so oh, it's harder for Lexi me to understand brings up that. a good point also dan has a film degree he would 100 know the logistics behind this line yeah so, yeah maybe I, I think i think dan nah, probably would get uh, it, being be charitable there with that. <laughs> yeah uh, we'll give anybody a film degree uh, apparently though also in this podcast uh ben hansen said he wants to make a play about the botched reveal of borderlands 3 uh, I have to listen to this podcast. <laughs> I have to see what? what's going on over there. I don't know. Someone in, judge okay. in chat said that. What's happening? What does I, that mean? Our man, ben, our man, our man Ben Hansen could kind of just do whatever he wants. Is what they're that making means, a third Borderlands. They're making, yeah, yeah. They're finally making one. <laughs> <laughs> 
I really enjoyed the photo you posted of uh, Mike's brothers uh, laughing. No, it was the point of crying. I of like tears. got over to the house and I, Mike and his friend were there, and I, I did the same thing with them. And I'm like, I didn't get pictures because they were both laughing. But then their brothers really just could not handle it, and they were cracking. And for, to be fair, both groups, like uh, uh, Mike and his brother, or Mike and his friend, and then both of his brothers. When I told both of them before I started asking the question, they were like. They don't think it's about the electricity, do they? <laughs> <laughs> but, like, each time, it was so great. Oh, man. So, yeah, you can look at, like, uh, you know, both sides of the coin here, right? Like, sure, it awoken Austin Walker from his deep slumber. Sure. But also, mm, now we know how to get him out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. mm, Jurassic Park post. <laughs> right? Yep. So, like, Park win, win. Your point. <laughs> you know, got to see both sides of that coin is all. Um, all right. I've been reminded this is a video game podcast, and that's what we're going to do right now. Talk about games. That's the wrong button. There it is. Nailed it. In one. All right, I'm just going to get some of my bullshit out of the way, uh, if you don't mind. Please. Um, I played the Stellar Blade demo oh, uh, nice. right on time. Yeah, uh-huh. I'm, I'm super curious about what your thoughts are about Stellar Blade. Actually, are yeah, you really? That that yeah. makes me feel good. Yeah. Uh, I I think it I think it's fun. I think it's really cool. And yeah. you know what? It's sexy. These people are. Sure. It's 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 hot. It's some hot <laughs> things happening. I don't know. Like there seems there's also a lot of like awful things happening. And the and the the sort of paradox of like hyper violence and also like hotness is is sure. interesting. You know where I'm. I Some might know. say that they're in conversation in this mm-hmm. video game. <laughs> yeah, they they really just, you know, I'm almost like, stop talking and worry about yourselves because there's terrible shit happening. Uh, yeah. I uh, I really enjoy this. Sort of, like, this game, I don't know what it is, but it has a style that kind of like feels like there's so much energy and 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 time and and craft and thought put into like the stylistic sort of like you know everything has this almost like grecian sculpturing to it right especially mm-hmm. with those the spaceships where they come in and i love that sure. sort of stuff and then they kind of like throw a lot of it away and i'm you know and i just want to yeah. i'm curious to see like is this part more part of this you know world building storytelling like or, or is that what we're going to be doing here i don't really know i don't think you can tell fully from the uh from the demo no. uh if we're uh, i think it's a great looking game i think uh you know moment to moment action uh i could see myself already getting a little frustrated with the with the parry block uh button and how that plays with the overall like it took light and heavy attack combat yeah uh, I don't. I I should never have to hit a button to pick something up. Uh, I don't know what we're doing. Oh, like, you can change that in settings. Okay, cool. Okay, good. Great. Yeah. yeah. It's just so weird that that's what they like sort of lead with. I I, I don't I don't know why you do well, that. But hey, it's your. It's game, pulling from a lot of things, and that's pulling from the near side of things, specifically making it feel Got a little it. more RPG. All right, Turbo Sean, the apologist for Stellar Blade. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah he, he keeps yelling at me for being too woke all the time. Sorry, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's what I'm known for. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm into it. I think it's I think it's one of those games where like it is going to be like a turn the mind off game, right? Yeah. Where I don't have to think too hard and uh, I'm just going to have fun fighting some really uh, ugly looking things. I did, think. You, did you get to the boss? I got to, yes, I, I got to the boss. Okay. It, yeah. I thought that boss fight was pretty good. Uh, yeah. In terms of like, okay, now the mechanics are all singing together in a really strong sense. way. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I'll be curious to see like what the final game sort of onboard you like. I always feel like demos, they do, they the path to tutorial is a little. I mean, the, the, the weird or... thing the weird thing here apparently is this this uh, demo is going to enable you to pick up from where you left off in the demo oh, in the final really? game. That's yeah. that's awesome. This is just okay. the beginning. Of the I game. love that. One of the reasons yeah. I played no, it's demo obviously the beginning was, was yeah. because of that. Yeah. yeah. So yes, this is All the right, beginning. So beginning. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I'm into it. I, I I dig what it's doing, and uh, it is a sharp looking game. And I like, you know, I like the world. I I, I like. I just want to, you know, for yeah. me, I always need that to be like fleshed out in a meaningful yeah. way. I need that to tell a story uh, for me. But uh, again, I'm not going to be hanging on that. I, I think I'm more uh, in tune with the sort of like stylistic and all of the the combat. So we'll see. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm still- surprised, but I do like it. I'm still in that place where I think this game is going to be fun to play. I think that, uh, um, and I do. I also think that yeah, there's a lot of sexiness in, in the game, and I, I, I there's no you know nothing wrong with that. I th- I think there is a lack of uh, sort of depth or 
uh, subtext to all that. It's like it's kind of all just on the screen. And if there is any any subtext, it is going to be something that is resonance of these people making this game playing near automata or uh, playing some of these other games that they are that they're uh, pulling from pulling it's like from, hey yeah. we want to we want to do the thing like that game and you know there's kind of nothing wrong with that either there is room for that uh, especially yeah. for because it's like it ain't that serious it's just a game trying to have a good time right, and i right. think i'm gonna go in there and i'm gonna be able to have a good time with it i i doubt this is gonna be a game that i'm gonna be thinking about a lot when i'm done with it and again nothing wrong with that that's not like some slam against it but that, no, i think that's what it's, it's going for Certainly feels like the style over the function for sure, right? Yeah. And like, hey, that's okay. I'm not gonna lie, like I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, man, you gotta be wearing like more armor or something. Like we're seeing too much. <laughs> that skin suit apparently, you know? apparently does that skin suit apparently does have like uh, the gameplay it's, ramifications. Like it apparently does make your okay. character m- more damageable. I suppose. I suppose. Yeah. And then the way to stop that is to put on a sweater, and the sweater uh, goes up just just to like just below her nipples. So. Yeah. Just oh, like a real naturally. sweater. Just like a real sweater. But well, all the best sweaters are like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, no complaints. Uh, all right. So <laughs> that's that. I'm also doing more Fortnite. Uh, I myself am now level 15 because I played a shit Congratulations. Of games with my son and most of his friends. And that mm-hmm. is definitively not strange. We've all moved on. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's I, right. it's fine. We I all are talking about that. Are y'all only doing Battle Royale? Yeah. So we're doing Battle Royale and then. One of the friends of the friend is like, we have to do this other, you know, 2v1 game. And it's basically this sort of like sandboxy thing where everyone has like their own corner. And then it's just, you know, it's just like uh, a fan made thing. Like, like one a, of the, the, yeah, it's like a creative level. Like a, it fe- like it unreal seems like Fortnite a like, thing. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like some sort of like server thing okay. that somebody made. Cool. I don't love that stuff. You're back I'd at Roblox do... already, Br- Bacalar. Congratulations. Yeah. Congrats. Well, I, I, definitely like you know walked back and i was like you guys uh battle royale is what we should be doing <laughs> i'm an expert listen to me and they all sooner or later fall in line so that's uh, good that's been, huge. been playing that but uh nikki you're so right the uh difficulty has begun to, yeah. to ramp up and the and the victory royales are now a little bit uh, and, far between. Apart, yeah. right? <laughs> and, and like it's funny because my kids now having a reckoning with like strategy. Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Posi- you know? I got a bad positioning. I- I'm a- yeah. I'm like, hey, you gotta stop just running out <laughs> in the middle of nowhere, in the middle of a wide open field, blasting your. Go- what do you think's gonna happen, bud? Yeah. What do you think's gonna happen? Imagine you did that on the soccer field or on the like. You can't do that. Yeah. So, uh, you know, sort of like teaching strategy, I guess, is for the sure. next chapter. And I think sure. the thing, I think the thing that Fortnite does really well is that the penalty for making a mistake, because there are so many. And I throw, I think the balance of this has gotten much better because for a while there were items in the game that would like kill you very quickly, and yeah. it felt bad to mm. have happened to you and i still it, i wouldn't say it feels good to get one shot or like lit up immediately like that but like now it is so thoroughly like a you fucked up therefore you are being punished now for the mistake that you made like here is here is why and how that is happening um which i think is sick and like yeah. also sometimes the person killing you is john cena it's so, like you can't get too mad. No, you that's, know? Just, that's like, fine. Totally, I'm not mad. Like Peter Griffin is just like, uh, yeah. you know, like whatever. Like you can't get mad at that. So it's like it. I think it as as an educational tool, like legitimately and actually for like understanding how to play other kinds of games and the ways that you have to think about putting yourself into situations, how you get yourself out of situations. Mm-hmm. The moment to moment in that game, there's so much you could be doing that I yeah, think yeah. it is like as an er game for folks like and as an er game for your kid like can't pick them better i don't think yeah yeah Um, it's it's been wild to also see how quickly he's just picked up all the vernacular like he's just like all commons you know he's like i hate common guns i'm like yeah Uh, he's he's like i only he's like i only run purples maybe a green oh that's my favorite gun check this out i'm just like wow yeah you are uh, moving at the speed of light, and I am just sort of uh, here to watch. It's been fun. It's definitely yeah. been fun. Are yeah. you still going back and forth between zero build and build? Or yeah, I think so. I sometimes if we we we'll, it depends on who we're jumping in with. If we do it sure. ourselves, we do build. 
but he's got a buddy who likes to play with no build and i yeah. i prefer no build too I, I, are you the, oh yeah you're not building are you i just don't want to do that yeah you know like sure. i don't want to do it and i don't want to deal with it yeah um, i feel like anyone older older than actually 17 years old doesn't can't build i don't think the no. brain is wired that way <laughs> to know Very how to build the video game fortnite yeah, it's yeah they a little bit fortnite do. i played yeah, i mean like, it's honestly, always you try to shoot someone and a fucking castle sprouts up yeah. around like, them like, what like and it I does like just come from these kids but... like my daughters like i can't like walk into a hotel room without them being like all right and now we've made a fort i'm like it was 30 seconds what'd you do yeah. like you just do this every room you walk into and basically yes so like they want to be building constantly so a game yeah. that like leans into that, that is for them. and then you and then you can vote and you're like i'm never gonna build another thing that's the government's job that's, <laughs> that's the government's job <laughs> yeah. that's awesome um all right uh grub tell us about a game that i've been really looking forward to children of the sun yeah so it's a game I, I i played that demo and now it is out today i believe uh at the very least this week and um it is a sniper game but all you can do as this sniper is uh, uh, basically circle around a camp, an encampment that has uh, your targets. And you can go left or right, and this reveals the targets. And you can mark them, of course, to make it easier to find them. You can also mark things like, oh, there's a bird in the air. You can mark them or, or a, a fish in the water and stuff like that. And they'll play around with that later. Uh, you can mark gas tanks on cars. And really, the whole thing about this game is you are going to fire one bullet. So what happens if there's like a, a dude in the house and a dude outside by the car and there's no way to get them in a straight line? Well, it's, this game's not about that. It is about shooting into one dude and as soon as you hit the, hit that target, the game stops or basically slows down a, a lot and enables you to turn the, the bullet and then go into the next target and then turn the bullet and go into the next target. They then begin layering on wanted. it's it's yes. It feels a lot like wanted, um, but they, they add a lot of like stuff on top of that where um, once you have the bullet fired and it hits a target, uh, yeah, yeah, you can, sure, you can aim over there at the other person, but what if there's, like, a fence there? Well, it's like you can actually aim above that and then hit the left trigger, and this will slow down time while you're in midair, and then you can adjust that, the, 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 uh, trajectory of the, of the, uh, the bullet slightly in its flight. Um, eventually you get some other stuff on top of that as well, but the core gameplay of, like, this puzzle-solving mechanic and finding ways to, you know, make sure you can get a bunch of headshots, as quickly as possible so you can get your score multiplier and this is how i am playing the game now where i'm like i'm looking at the leaderboard and i'm like oh i want to make sure i have a higher score than tam of course so I, i'll go back <laughs> and i'll play it four or five times trying to maximize things and there's situations where, okay if i fire at this one target this will give me good positioning on the rest and then i can go i can um uh, go shoot another target that's on the other side of the camp that'll scare two of the other guys and they'll start running towards the car where someone is already sitting and they will uh, once they get near the car i'll shoot the gas tank on the car blow up the whole thing kill all of them at once and i'll get uh, huge bonus points and so figuring out how to like manipulate manipulate your environment uh, to get these uh these uh, targets in specific positions so you can uh, do as much damage as quickly as possible is the whole game and it's been really fun so far i'm i'm, I'm super into what this game is putting down it's also got a really cool style um yeah where like there's mini games where your character's just like cleaning their gun and uh it's like this you do like these slow interactions of like you know pulling out the, the the pistol or whatever pulling out the chambers and then it turns into like this weird old arcade game while your character's still cleaning their gun like this is what's happening cool. in their head where you're yeah, controlling cool. like a bullet on a 2d plane it's it's got a lot of style it doesn't get in your face with story there is um usually a little setup intro video for most of the levels uh, but those guys go by pretty fast and then you're just in the action and it's like okay how can i figure this out and i'm um, um yeah like i said i'm very down with it I have lately been. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was going to say like the first thing that you, uh, were, you know, when you were describing the first thing that popped in my head was uh, super hot. Yeah, it's got um, super hot vibes. Yes. Yeah. It's got super hot vibes. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Uh, I think it's say, um, say no more. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's, they're not going to play exactly the same, but you could see how these are like branching paths of, of similar yep. ideas. Into it. Sorry, Nikki. What were you going to say? Oh no, I was going to say yeah. I've been thinking about neon white a lot over the course of the last two weeks for some reason, because I was like, damn, remember that video game? Yep. You know, like, that was good. They should have made more of that. Uh -huh. um, but it sounds like this kind of maybe scratches some of that itch a little bit. You know, maybe? I, it definitely, I mean, it definitely does in some ways, because I am leaderboard chasing. It's not about yeah. like just raw action. It for is sure. like, okay, I tried something. It didn't work. How either how can I make that work? Or I'm going to have to figure something else out. And it's a little bit less like, in, in Neon White, I'm like, 
go, 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 brain off, yeah. brain off, go, go, go. And I love that. That is one hundred percent where I want to be when I'm playing a game. This game's a little bit more like, no, nah, you got you're gonna you're gonna have to think about it. But then at least at the very least for me, it is rewarding once you do figure out a really cool method to get these characters to behave in the way you want them to. So for sure. uh, um, it has what I need to get out of a game like this. And then to see the score at the end and kind of like I think the the little hump there for me at the beginning was figuring out how that scoring mechanic was working. And then real I'm like I thought I did pretty good. It's like, OK, well, it's very important to keep the multiplayer multiplier going. That means yeah. getting these kills as quickly one one after the other as possible while the meters dropping down. So you can't like take a long time to like aim your bullet. You kind of have to whip it around, which actually I'm like, oh, I should be playing on mouse because playing on the Steam Deck is fine. Mm -hmm. I'm making it work, but I should probably mm -hmm. be playing on mouse really if I'm trying to that get the sense. best score possible. And then it's. Uh, like the, the next most important thing is yeah, getting multi kills or getting headshots and as opposed to chest shots or occasionally they'll have like glowing parts and that enables enables you to get special bonus abilities later on in the game and you could do more right. with that. So yeah, it, it's it's a it's a cool game and it's it's got a really cool vibe and I think it's doing enough to keep me like attached to the leaderboard chasing. And I think if you sprinkle on all of those factors, that's the kind of thing. It's like, okay, yeah, this is a solid, well-made game, well-made game that understand what, understands what it needs to be. Cool. cool. Very good. Uh, all right. I need to check that out and we might be doing something with that later, right? Yeah. We'll probably get it on the site at some point. Yeah. We'll do something. Excellent. Uh, tell me someone about yellow taxi goes broom. Rob, did you end up playing this? I did play it. I played a bunch of this. I am. Did you? Uh, I played the demo, so okay. I wanted to talk it over a bit with you. All right. So why don't you, you start and then I'll kind of like answer your questions. If you have questions that go beyond what's in the demo. OK, so Yellow Taxi Goes Room is an interesting game. It's uh, a, basically a 3D platformer, kind of a retro style collectathon 3D yeah. platformer. But you're not playing as, you know, a mario a sonic you know that's our anthropomorphic just person walking around you're playing as this wind up toy car mm -hmm. and so you are do you're playing a platformer where you're constantly either driving forward or going in reverse and then just turning left or and right it's a very interesting control scheme and then it just plays like you expect a 3d platform to play like especially i'm getting big like 3d sonic uh game vibes from this yeah, a little bit the way everything's set up like you get a line of uh rings and sonic to sort of direct you this way you get a line of coins in this game to tell you hey go over there next um it's very wild visually they're going for like this retro aesthetic which uh pro tip turned on the crt filter and yeah. turned down your game resolution to 480p and it just looks like a retro game. It's very cool. How fun. Uh, yeah, but you, you start getting other abilities. I don't know how deep it goes in the demo. At least you, I think you only get uh, a mid-air dash, so, which, which is kind of cool because your taxi will just like pause in mid-air, spin around, and then dash forward. And that allows you to sort of, if you chain it together, you can cancel that, and that'll give you a little hop. And that's your jump in the game is canceling your dash there's a lot of really unique movement options in this game that you wouldn't expect out of a 3d platformer um my big thing is that it's very visually busy once you start moving yeah out. i'm i'm looking at this trailer and it is it is wild it's a it's, lot there is a yeah. lot going on it is if i'm not mistaken it's i think it's is it published by anyone we know no i think it's just like uh some random Panic team. arcade yeah, and those awesome guys is the publisher okay yeah. um it, it's definitely it looks like the kind of game you would like expect devolver to publish it's one you know one of those games in sort uh in terms of the sense of humor and everything that's going on there but it's all yeah it's a lot to take in it starts out very like a very sonic very like coastal uh sort of area and you're kind of just like going from this major platform to the next one, collecting a little bit of stuff. But then it puts you in a, this city where you are playing crazy taxi, basically. They, mm -hmm. they, you know, do the joke there. But there's all this shit happening around you. It's so just absolutely bonkers. But there is a demo, so I think people uh, should go check it out and see if this type of humor and style is uh, for them. Because I think it might be a bit much for me to actually play the full game, but I thought it, it was a really interesting concept, at least. Yeah, I so I have the full game and I've been playing it and I it took me a minute to like understand all those movement options that I did have, uh, especially because it's like there is no st just straight up jump. Uh, you're going to have to right. like 
maneuver, maneuver your, your vehicle so it's in certain parts of the level so you can access other parts of the level. And usually that's going to mean you're going to need a ramp, at least as far as yeah. I, I like at my skill level with this game. And I, I like I have said, I'm like not jiving with it immediately at my skill level. I'm like, OK, I could see there's something over there. I could see there's something over there. If I can get to that ramp, I can hit my my you know, midair dash and get over there. Uh, maybe. And if I can hit the brake, I'll be able to stop on that tiny little platform and get the collectible that's up there. And figuring that stuff out is pretty satisfying, but I find myself a lot of times being like, oh, I wish I had a jump. I kind of just wish I had a jump button yeah, uh, that yeah. would make, make this a little bit easier for me. Like a little spring tires or something. A little like spring that. tires, Suspension. something like that. Yeah. And now, I mean, I do, there are uh, opportunities where it's like, okay, I was able to basically almost like drive up this wall and get to this really rare collectible mm. that's, that's up there. And that felt really cool. And those moments are, are neat, but the, like Sean said, the, le the levels are so visually busy. I'm not like picking out the cool opportunities. It's just kind of all washing over my eyes. I'm like, okay, I guess I gotta, I gotta get all these coins yeah. and all these people, I guess I could talk to most of these people. They're just kind of saying random stuff. Um, it feels a little, it feels like it kind of needs an editor a little bit. It just needs to be paired back mm -hmm. here or there and kind of like focus in on the fun uh, for the player. And uh, at least that in the first couple of levels that I played, that's how I felt. Um, yeah. But it does, it's got a real great style to it at the very least. Yeah, definitely. Cool. All right. And that is out now. Go check it out. Yeah, another game out today. Yep. Um, Sean, I don't know if we ever gave you a Pokemon Corner. Let but you get it now, whether you like room, it or not. Let alone a room to hang out in with Pokemon, but w w what's going on? Um, okay, so first of all, first of all, so uh, I realized when I was doing timestamps for the last Bombcast, I never mentioned the name of the show that I'm watching, <laughs> which is kind of important for a TV <laughs> show. Like, yes, it's Pokemon, but the new one is uh, Pokemon Horizons. But uh, I want to sneak this in here because I have a video game thing to talk about with it. That show just keeps going places I don't expect. Like I, I mentioned the whole like the main character has some issues she's dealing with and everything. But a few episodes later, um, th the cast of the show is very eclectic and they're all like riding around this airship is how they get around. So it's a very like a whimsical classic anime sort of vibe they're going for very colorful cast of characters they're all very di different things going on there you even it's cool to see i know a lot of shows are doing it. it's cool to see fucking some gender roles a little bit you know they're, they're like yeah yeah you know what dad can't be the one that's good cooking clean that's that's cool everybody so i like seeing that but like one of these examples is this uh very nurse joy character got the pink hair and everything she's a doctor and but but her thing is like she's always wearing like this punk rock outfit. She's always wearing like leather jackets and um like goth dresses and stuff, you know, big vibes of like the doctor from Persona 5. And it's like, what's going on with this character? Why why is she like that? And they address in the episode where she's like, My whole family is Pokemon doctors. I was born into this. I was forced to go down this path. I, they put me at Pokemon Center right out of school. I didn't want to be there. So I ran away from home and I'm, I'm on this journey now because I want to take care of wild Pokemon. I never had a choice in all this. And I'm taking back my life. I'm like, I'm sitting here pajamas on with my cereal <laughs> yeah, Saturday sure? morning. I knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, man, I didn't expect Pokemon to have me crying in my Cheerios Aww. over existential dread. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so is the implication, sorry, and I'm yeah. so grateful for you sharing this moment, but yes, I do, it does raise a large question that I have. <laughs> Are the Nurse Joys and Officer Jennies a race of people? Basically, yeah. <laughs> okay. Good question. So they're, they're, they're all family. It's it's a very silly anime. All explanation. family. They're all family in some way, shape, or form. That that's the because you know they had to explain. Well, why does the nurse in Pokemon Red and Blue always just look like the same person? They're like, oh, because they're all like cousins and sisters and, and they stuff. They all look like that. And I mean, all Jeffs look. talk about video games. I mean, so are there? <laughs> true. That is true. That's true. Are there male or gender non-conforming? <laughs> Not yet, apparently. In the Nurse Joy family, no. Do they reproduce? Is it asexually? asexually? Yeah. You have to assume, right? You have to assume. I mean, That's the yeah. only explanation. The other explanation I mean, is much scarier. So yeah, like like it's like uh, that <laughs> guy up in the north of uh, where, the, where the male is born. He's like just leave it out in the woods. Yeah, just leave it in the woods. <laughs> yeah. Or you think some dude in a chancy are just like popping out all these nurse joys or something like? Oh, well, maybe that's what's in the egg. Yeah, that's what's in the egg. <laughs> 
Ah, that's just in the air. Anyways, but to retire into video games, um, the European International Championships for Pokemon happened over the weekend. Whatever yeah. that ha- whatever Is like Pikachu the best Pokemon like again? Did he win again? You're an idiot. Uh, so whenever <laughs> basically what inquiry, these, you might want to know. <laughs> well, these national championships happen. Uh, like, uh, you know, everyone gets the itch. It's like, oh, yeah, I want to play the video game. Yeah, everyone. Video game or whatever. Well, all of us fans, all of us nerds. Uh, so I um, I want to play Pokemon TCG Live, which I kind of fell out of love with a little bit there. But like the virtual card game video game right there because the uh the person who won that was using my deck like the deck that i run wow they were running a very unique did you get royalties play. yeah it was, yeah, yeah you, a question yeah mm-hmm. i get like one percent of his way that's huge <laughs> no, you these tournaments these tournaments pay ridiculous nowadays like you okay, can get that? how much like 10 talking? grand that's nuts to be for, good at for, Pokemon for like first, last place or what, what is that for like first a, place but I think oh, first, first okay. place at just like I think that might be what regionals even pay out now like and it's even higher for like Nats and stuff it's crazy how much they're paying out nowadays what's uh, the how, most anyone's ever won because uh the the you're yeah that's, a, that's whatever the, the payout for answer. worlds would be which I I don't know. I'll look it up. Well, Just thinking like 10 grand, it's like, all right, but like, how, how would it cost to get you there? Like, what are we dealing with? You well, that's know? the thing. You don't, you, like, if you go to every one, obviously it's not worth it. But if you're like, keep in mind, regionals happen like several times a month. And it'll be like, there's one in Ohio, there's one in mm. Wisconsin, there's one in California. They're all over a place. So if you win your local regionals, it basically costs you nothing to go and you win however many thousands it is. It's, so how how much do they used so to pay? Less. Nothing. Yeah, nothing or less. So yeah. now <laughs> uh, the prize pool for 2024, the okay. cumulative prize pool is a half a million dollars. If okay. you come in first at Worlds, it's 50K. Mm-hmm. Second is 30K. Third and fourth get 20K. Fifth through eighth get $15,000. That doesn't make yeah. any sense. Why would fifth through eight? Why not? Whatever. Yeah, why not? Sure. Yeah. Well, because they're your yeah. participation trophies. Am I right? Yeah. Because you are you're, with the way the bracket works. Wokemon uh, are all the same. Wokemon. <laughs> <laughs> if you finish uh, fifth through eighth, you've all finished in the same place in the bracket. Yeah, that makes oh, sense. I see. Like you, you got I to the it. elite eight, you, right? Yeah, you like, crash yeah. out at the same time. Yeah. But considering, like back in my day, it would be like you could win a major championship, and they're like, "Cool, congrats! Here's like two booster boxes. See you next yeah, time." Yeah. Here's like, a hat. The, when I, wow, when I won my day, huh, Sean? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, I've been playing the TCG competitively since 2004. <laughs> like, actually, back in my day. <laughs> when Man. I won my um, my regional, and by regional, I mean it was at the One Toys R Us Beyblade tournament, they gave <laughs> me a $50 Toys R Us gift card that I immediately used on more Beyblades. Yeah. Which comes yeah. Out, though. Um, like, but with that gift card, I bought that was the first series of like those smaller metal ones mm. that they released was at that time. Uh-huh. And those were fucking ringers, dude. They were so heavy. Like yeah. it was impossible to That's get like those. Take, take someone's ankle off. Beyblade. Yeah. Those like, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. I fucking Beyblades. We should get into Beyblades. I feel like Jane has said this before yeah. on the website. But we got to get into Beyblades. We can have a Beyblade arc. Yes. I, I think Beyblades are. I. I, they're cool. They're no longer like they're no cool dreidels. What he's about to say, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you doing? Um, you stun locked me there. Uh, See, bad. he's the only one who can get away with that on this gas. <laughs> I mean, Nikki said that there would be no way. <laughs> oh, wow. dreidling. These dreidels have spikes on them. Um, yeah, that'd be sick. Um, no, I feel like Mikey doesn't care about them anymore. He's like, those are just tops. They, I mean, it's stupid. because they are. They are stupid tops. Yeah, like, like he, he's just, he's like, it, we're done. It is I'm as, done. it is as primitive as looking at the sun during the eclipse. No, I think that's <laughs> may, maybe cooler. I think that's cool Beyblades, is, yeah, for sure. Is maybe cool. I mean, Beyblades are kind of like you know collecting anything. It's like you know, like yeah, collecting I think, shoes. Okay, I think I never, maybe because like shoes are functional. The, the you know, like, of like, but they're the, still just shoes. 
Yeah, but like I, I'm with you with like they're all bes- not bespoke, but they're all like they all have their own unique design, and like that's kind yeah. of fun, and you can mix and match like all the three pieces. Mm-hmm. Like I like yeah. that, and you can let it rip. So you can let cool. it rip. Yeah, hell yeah. I won. I won uh fifty dollars from Attack of the Show once, uh, and uh, oh, oh yeah, you're what, rich. What, what what was her name Attack that was on that show? show? Oh, She's married Olivia to Olivia Munn. Munn. Yeah, she she said my hair was nice because I. I picked, oh, hang on! I picked no, it out. Hang on. I picked it out before. I think oh, she was being facetious. You did not win fifty dollars, unless unless this is a different story. Yeah, Wait, what if Sean is your fucking manager? Sean's your manager with a better memory. <laughs> yeah, what? Well, 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 no, well, dummy. That's you not want a happened. Pizza Hut gift card? Yeah, I want a Pizza Hut gift card for fifty dollars. Yeah, oh, yeah. Right. very different. That's yeah, very different. Yeah. Yeah. It all. It all. It was all going to turn into zones at the end of the day. Yeah. So yeah, I guess for so. Jeff Grubb, yes, it's just very important to note that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, do you, I, okay, how many times were you on Attack of the Show? I think it's just that one time. I mean, that was, like, as, like, a call-in, like, a fan guest. This is a long time. Oh, you were in, the... like, a media hit. No, 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 no. Oh, I was on the Twitter wall a handful, of you, a handful of times. That was my whole, that's the reason I have Twitter. Wait, what? Really? What is that? Yeah. The who? The what? what, what they, used, they had a TV on the left side, or the stage right side of that set that was a vertical television, and it just was tweets. Mm. That like a producer was looking at the the hashtag, um, and then would pull the tweets up onto the thing, and then like he would watch the show and then tweet like do a live tweet, and then like that was that's why I have Twitter. Interesting, because I was trying to get on the on the TV board. That's fair. Yeah, I want to say I did it three times. You were on the program. I was on it. I was part oh. of like the talking head. They had refrigerator segments on Attack of the Show. I miss those. <laughs> Nikki, you, you probably fucker. talked about the iPhone. I think I think you talked about the iPhone. <laughs> Nikki, you got me so good. Yo, Nikki got me good. That was cold. Well, that was yeah. good. Refrigerators, I know. Uh-huh. Uh huh. No, I think the first one I ever did was talking about like Ghostbusters rings a bell. Sure. I'm probably clean shaven. Oh we're, sure, we're you probably look like a little boy. This. This, wow. this is like pre 2010, I want to say. Um. I remember having to stay so late in the goddamn city because they were on the West Coast and I had to go to like a satellite place around Times Square. Mm-hmm. And they were like, can you just stay to like 11 o'clock in, in the city and not go home and just do... And I was like, sure. Why not? <laughs> Olivia Munn. The only time mm-hmm. I've done one of those like Anything. satellite studio calling things was for uh, Chinese state media. Wow. Oh, come again? Cool. Uh, Chinese state media had like a cable channel that was kind of like their equivalent of BBC, like World Service. Uh, yeah. And uh-huh. yeah, they, like the they syndicated had, one. They had me on to talk about Fortnite and PUBG, I think. Mostly Fortnite. Oh, sick. Yeah. Uh... Do you like, did you like doing those things? Do you like talking head stuff? It was weird. I mean, it was fine. I, I didn't like, I wasn't like, oh, well, this is my future or anything. But uh, I was like, yeah, this is fine. I'm not, I didn't like having to drive into the city to do it. That sucked. Yeah. I always grappled with the idea of like, this is going to do uh, better things for your career and then simultaneously be like, who fucking watches television yeah. anymore? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like this will be in front of the most eyeballs. Anything you've ever done is also none of those people care about the thing you're talking about. <laughs> exactly. They will. They, you are being used to like help them understand because they're geriatric and irrelevant. Uh-huh. I'm sorry, CNBC. Um, <laughs> whatever, right? What other games we got going on before uh, we take a potty break here? Did we? I, we talked about content warning. We played it on DPF last mm-hmm. week. We talked about it on BCR. I don't know if we want to talk. Yeah, I mean, let's, let's talk about, about it a little bit more here for the, for the main show. Uh, content warning was a lot of fun. You do, uh, real, real quick, uh, Sean, Nikki, do you think Bacalar would get motion sick with content warning? Yes, there's yeah. for the exact same reason. There's no crosshair. Oh so, fuck me! Really? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it would. I think it would fuck you up. I mean, wait, that's not. Sorry. Try. That's not. It's not. It's not universal. Like I think it was just that. What was the name of the game again? Lethal, Lethal Company. Company. Lethal Company. But this, I think well, you can try. It. It's mostly. Lethal I'm assuming yes, it will because it's this exact same style and vibe hmm. of head bob and yeah, like I, I'm motion and stuff. I'm willing to jump into it. I'll take one for the team. Thank you, you know, so much for your service. Okay, you you got it. You got it. Um, but yeah, content warning is a lethal company like, which is funny. <laughs> um, and you, the goal is to create a video, uh, that gets a lot of views that is scary. 
you go down in this bell, this diving bell into a place called the old world, which is just hell. It's just hell. There's monsters down there. It's just Pittsburgh. Um, it, <laughs> there's here in Pittsburgh, there's monsters down there. Um, the refrigerator Perry is down there also, and he wants to <laughs> just take you anywhere. Um, but I think the monster design is really funny. Like it's it's very it's all very silly. Like the the tone of the game, I think, is far enough away from Lethal Company. Lethal Company is like the joke is like, oh, how dire this is, right? Right. Um, and then it plays with that, but content warning is like, oh, it is very bright and silly when you're above ground. You go downstairs, it's all grayscale except for you and the other like the player characters, which I think is like such a good bit because you can always tell when a person is getting attacked. <laughs> like, regard, like if you're doing a quick scan left to right, and like I was posting some of the the videos that we um, filmed to TikTok over the weekend, um, and like it's the visual language in that game is so strong because you can so very much tell when a person is being attacked. Um, but yeah, you're going down there, you're filming monsters and uh, sk spooky things. And then there's items in the game that you can buy that like modify it. So it's like you can get a goo ball, which just creates a ball of goo that slows a monster down. Or you can buy microphones, which work because it has proximity audio. So if um, a person has one of the reporter mics, they can go really far away from the camera, but still speak into it and be audible. There's a boom mic. There's like a soundboard, which is very funny. That has a bunch of like silly preloaded sounds. There's a green screen that you can go like cycle through what feels like a million jpegs to film like little pre and post roll stuff it's really fun um it's silly it's lighthearted. it feels like you can get in and get out without like really being the the penalty i think that i felt when we would lose in lethal company felt made me kind of feel a little bad because i was like oh we did do all of this work and we have these huge like these huge pieces that I'm like, oh, we have to, we have to get this out. We have to get this out. But turning it into the one camera that you have to work with, um, and it still lets you save the video even if you don't recover the camera, which is huge. Um, I just think it's really smart. Yeah, it's yeah, a, it's cool. a smart, it's a smart uh, iteration on this idea, um, and it's only eight bucks if you haven't played it. Uh, I think yeah. I think what really like sends it for me is the uh everything is set up to encourage the players to start acting like YouTubers very quickly. Mm -hmm. We kind of like didn't miss a beat once we realized what was going on. Uh yeah. and then everyone's like and here's what this looks like to me and it was like it was just everyone's shouting in their stuff and shouting uh, uh catchphrases or you know, doing weird intros or just having a, a different idea for for uh, the video and being so excited by like, I like when we get back, we're going to watch this video, and I bet it's going to be funny, and it will always make yeah. us laugh. I don't know, like, out of context, you post that thing to YouTube as a real YouTube video, and obviously it's not going to work that way, but, like, if you were watching it, everyone was having a good time. Everyone was, like, very yeah. excited to see those videos when we got back, and that made us, yeah. like, one of, like, okay, well, we are going to get the boom mic and do stupid stuff and have the clapper going across the screen the entire yes. time. And I, uh, I, I really enjoyed myself. It was fun to see uh, the audience really uh, be happy with that game as yeah. well. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, when Jan Dan, once you guys get back, we should try it out. Backlar, you can risk your, uh, your, you know, your inner ear, your health, your inner ear yeah, fluids. Yeah, just have a bar <laughs> fucking next to me. It's yeah. fine. That's fine. I you just turn it off. Usually, you know. Yeah, you just live that, live that uh, way. With the yeah, bar technically, I mean, look, the world is my bar bucket. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got hands. <laughs> I do wonder if there's a mod just so we could do the same thing we did with uh, Lethal Company and have like you know eight nine people playing. I think I've already seen one. I think yeah. I've seen that too. So I have a new theory about the motion sickness. Yeah. I think it's also mouse and keyboard. I think mouse and keyboard do it more than uh, control. Oh, because is it because would... it's faster than your body would normally move? I'm gonna. I'm gonna act like that wasn't an insult. Oh, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I wasn't really good on it. Oh, now it's Metzlar. Rich speed of three. <laughs> well, look, okay. I move quickly when I need to. Sorry. Right. Mm -hmm. Very mostly dangerous over are... short distances. He's a natural mostly, sprinter. Mostly when there are sharp blades on my feet. <laughs> but that's about it. Uh. I'm not fucking old, okay? Even the people I play <laughs> oh. Fortnite with were like, who's the other guy? And oh. they're like, oh no, it's my dad. They're like, really? He's not bad. <laughs> He's one of the good ones. Bad. 
<laughs> he's not God. geriatric, so he's okay. <laughs> I just feel like I'm stepping on every rake in the fucking backyard right now. All right. Uh, yes. I. But okay. I think there's something about like I don't know mouse and keyboard. Just like the way to go, like I always rock on, you know. And it's I don't gonna, know what it is. It's gonna be like a, a varying like, factors, right? If like if, like if you're yeah, far away I from the TV, you can have a different like you know field of view and a different like uh, speed at which you're moving the camera and stuff like that. All those things affect you differently. <laughs> Because yeah. when we were doing CS, that the latest CS update, I I was good, I was good to go, and I was mousing, keyboarding the 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 shit out of that. Uh, so I don't know. All right, um, thank you for the 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 comment, Nikki. We hey, won't listen, chalk it up I as was not yeah. trying. I was just trying uh, to say. Mm -hmm. You move a mouse because of mouse acceleration. Your neck yeah. doesn't have neck acceleration. It's not like it's, it's not like it scales up. We all know I have no neck. There. Okay. <laughs> all right. Take us a fucking break. Look at this. <laughs> There's no neck. I have so no sensitive neck. today. <laughs> Seriously, that I know you didn't mean it, Nikki, but I have no neck. You got Everyone a neck. always says it. to me, "You're just shoulders and a chin, and that's it." Nah, you got a neck. You it's don't there, donate but your but neck to Lucy James. Your extra neck. Prevalent. <laughs> In between, I wear more tables. Yeah, one there's a perfect neck. neck in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> that rules. Oh shit! Oh, All right, what are the games we got before? Uh, before we uh, the I'll, break? I'll hit a one-two here. I'll just follow up. Um, after my soul searching from last week, I did find the video games I want to play right now. Uh, nice. Unicorn Overlord. I am still playing that in handheld mode. Great. Um, yes. Which means that I am. Not very far because I get like an hour in before bed before I fall asleep. It's a weird game to not be on PC because it combines tile based stuff with RTS elements. And mm -hmm. so frequently I'm like, oh, I kind of just want to click on the thing instead of the Nintendo Switch had a touch screen. I haven't even you know? used a touch screen, but yeah. <laughs> that's why I said it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, I don't know. Like I can't. That's the thing. I can't imagine for a variety of reasons playing this game on like PS5 or Xbox. Sure. Like uh, having to pause the action, cycle through your units with like the D-pad or something, or move that cursor around with the analog stick. It feels a bit clunky, and so there. Early on, there were some moments where I would have to like figure out how to how was the quickest way to get to this unit cancel their movement and then send them to this other place instead it, it just felt a bit awkward but i don't know um I, I i learned it i got over that and now i'm having fun with it does feel very like old school fire emblem like more of GB, mm. gba era fire emblem mm. maybe to a fault sometimes because there are things that are, they label as side quest optional stuff i'm like this is like a tutorial for how to play a class of character. That doesn't feel like it should be optional content, but I, I get that they want to like give you the choice if you want, just like get straight into the more story stuff. I don't know, but I, I am enjoying it. It's a fun tactics game. It's vanillaware, so obviously it's got style to it, and it's great in handheld mode outside of like learning how they're assigning all the buttons and everything. Yes, Jeffrey. Do bro. you think I would enjoy this game? <sighs> I feel like it's a game you would once the tactics click, you would be like down, but would probably fall off of it eventually. Okay, all right. Well, I'm still getting. Yeah, I, I, nothing I, else because I have it is very anime with a not great story. The story is very paper thin. Okay. It's Does it just like yay? Verily, we must capture the kingdom. It's like so, so uh, surface can I level skip medieval stuff. Like yeah, you can skip stuff. Mm -hmm. So. All right. If you I just have the demo, the I'll try it. There. I'll try it. I'll try it. Yeah, try the demo yeah. out. It's it's a weird it's a very weird feeling tactics game, but once you get in the flow, it's like you can actually like start getting, you know, it's pretty snappy once you get the hang of it. It's cool. Um, but the other game I've been playing, like I mentioned, I would move on to Y'all heard about Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth? Yes, know I've about heard tell about yes, this you, game, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, a, that's a pretty good game, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm coming coming off of Persona 3 Reload. And I keep drawing comparisons there for so many reasons. If nothing else, they're all under the same roof. But man, I had such a blast. Like Sunday night, I didn't even make progress in the story. I was just wandering around. No problems. 
do they make it clear what city you're in or is it just like hawaii generally? you're just in hawaii yeah, yeah. That's what I'm God, like, i didn't even Honolulu, think about that or is this supposed to, yeah it's i think because really they're like very explicitly yokohama this is where you are yeah, and right. then you get, you get to america and they're like you're on whole in hawaii city <laughs> Yeah. yeah, Hawaii. It, it does, I, I think, think it does have to be Honolulu. It, so it has much. to be Honolulu. I love that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I think they pixelize it so much that they maybe like don't uh, reference it too much, at least. But no, it's really fun. I just uh, I, I met Danny Trejo. That whole scene was really awesome. Yes, like the acting in this game and the I assume motion capture is like fantastic. It's really really well done. Uh the music, like. Mm. Dang, the Yakuza series, I've already I've always known to have good music, uh, especially some of the older ones. There's some bops like Kuze's theme and everything that a lot of people know. But there's even just random songs like there's this. Um, I got to a point in the story where like a band of the Barracudas who like kind of don't know to not mess with uh, Ichi and the crew. They show up and the Barracuda theme song k- kicks in and it's like ding, 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 Barracuda. I'm just like jamming out with this random grunt yeah. battle. And this game has so much style. Uh, I'm really having a fun time with it. The one issue I'm kind of having with it, I still think, this is a problem I had with Yakuza 7, I still think that the battle system can be a little too analog for its own good. Where sometimes I will try to line something up and like the arrow will point in a specific direction. I'm like, okay, so this will be knocked back into my teammate yeah. or like it'll you know, knock them into a specific object or uh, healing AOE stuff. Like oh, they're in range, right? And then they like saunter out of range. Sometimes things just don't quite line up even when the game tells me that they should. And that's kind of annoying. Yeah. I get why they're doing it because it's, you know, trying to pay homage to like the beat em up roots of the series, but yeah. it can be a little frustrating. So that's something that um, it is more frustrating early on. You get like, as your characters uh, build their social links between one another, uh, you will be able to do uh, more and more with those characters, like helping each other out. That sort of mitigates that, but that early, yeah. especially yeah. the like lining things up, the area of effect um, healing things, that's something you just kind of have to get used to where you're like, yeah. uh, okay, I probably should just, heal myself and try to get as close as possible because if i try to heal someone else she's going to run over there and unless i know they're all clumped together i i, yeah. I don't want to take the risk of her running over and like kind of missing everybody so i want to make it a little bit more predict- predictable that is a little bit uh frustrating for sure but i also like on the flip side of that i got so good at like when you would start group fights Sometimes mm-hmm. if you roll up on the enemies and they're all clumped together, if you move fast enough before they split up, I would like be able to like throw a grenade. Yeah, that's or true. Something, and I would do and big that's damage to like six people. And that was really fun because it felt like I was like I was moving fast enough through the menus to beat them, like to beat the to beat them to set up, which was really nice. Um, but yeah, it is. It's really good. I hope you don't hit the wall that I hit. I I am noticing. So this is something I know. Um, Lucy talked to DCM yeah, during the review period. Yeah, there's multiple points this then, happens. Yes. Yeah, and uh, Nikki, you brought it up on BCR the other day, but it does feel a bit grindy in the sense that it feels yeah. like I'm always a little under leveled. And you, you could do you could do a lot to get over leveled, but then the game will make sure once can. again you will be under leveled again at some point. Like yes. you're, you're, and you're I'm learning the language. Like, you should be here and here. You should have this level and these th- this gear. And that'll happen right. three, four times throughout the game. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, I went through the, you know, the, um, the factory area and mm-hmm. it's like, Hey, you should be level 13 and have two star equipment before you go through here. I was like, all right, well, each 13. The other guys are like 12, almost 13. I have like mostly two star gear. Like I should be good. Maybe it'll be a slight challenge. Like I'm, I'm used to turn-based RPGs. I'll figure it out. I, I was expecting a little bit of challenge and I got my ass handed to me. <laughs> I was like, I had to use all my like good healing items and everything. And I came out of there with money and stuff and like all of my resources yeah, gone. I'm like, yeah, for sure. So many RPGs, they, when I really thought about it, so many RPGs, you just never use all of your inventory. So I guess maybe that's what they were thinking is that they scale things in a way where they do make you use all of your resources. They make you think about you have X amount of money, you have X amount of items that you've picked up. You need you actually need to strategize before going into a fight. You need to prioritize what to bring in and like figure out how to spend these resources. And when I thought about it that way, I'm like, okay, yeah, I think it is just a challenge, at least so far. I am curious to like how much of a wall you get to i i will say 
this is one of many games that's reminded me this year that if you don't play our lot of RPGs, some people don't know. If it gives you a lot of save slots, you use, you have those use save them. slots for sure. Like, and that, yeah. like, that was that was something that I had to actively start changing yeah. in the yeah. way that I was playing the game because I was like, oh, that it's just this is how the, this is how they want me to do it. Like they yeah. want me to do this thing. The yeah. thing that I, because I, I started, I picked it back up, um, and I've just been li- literally like running around to like re- like familiar refamiliarize myself. Mm-hmm. I the thing that I will say about this game is that I don't feel stronger than I did when I started it. Is that just mm. how these ones are? Like these Where where are you at? Like, like I'm at the end. You're like I'm, I'm I'm basically at the end. And like I I don't know if it's like maybe I haven't been as experimental with the, the jobs is like i yeah with the job like i have swapped them around like everyone is doing something different and you're and, you, and, you're, and you're taking those skills that you have and, and then you're applying them. them yeah mm-hmm. but like it doesn't feel like it just feels like i'm I, pokemon has the same issue for me where it mm-hmm. feels like you get the guy and then i you like come out with the move set and then you use the same moves and then you're like okay well here are the moves yeah like, so I, I think the um the more power I felt came from uh, the drink links that would make all, all yes, my char- characters absolutely. like, yeah. they would, okay, hey, I'm going to, we can like team up and do a, an, an attack. And if someone else, once they're hey, down, we'll do, a, we'll do a follow-up attack. And and all, all those other stuff will, will like, kind of like latch onto one another and make every attack that, one, that much more powerful. Um, and then I don't know, I, th- I, thought, I thought some of like the higher uh, skilled uh, job class abilities felt some felt more powerful but yeah overall anytime you're like just fighting uh characters if they are appropriately leveled to you yeah you're gonna feel about the same throughout the entire game yeah. so yeah that is kind of yeah, how I think these the, uh, feel i think i think i think the positional stuff is almost misleading because this is very much a traditional jrpg and i mean to the point that you know ichi's obsessed with dragon quest and talks about it all mm-hmm. the time and uh you know yakuza 7 so i think that's just that's what they're going for. And traditional JRPGs usually are, okay, you're, you're a little bit stronger now. You got a better version of this move, but then eventually the enemies are going to like start to scale up to where you are. And that's sort of the uh, give and take the flow yeah. of this type of game. So did you? Yeah, uh, I, I think Grub's right. A lot of where your power comes from is in finding those new ways to play uh, through the stuff you unlock with drink links and whatnot. Yeah, for did, sure. you, did you all use the, uh, the football job class? Yes. That's a good one. I don't know yet. That's good. That's, that's real I'm good. good. Man, I'm good 20 one. hours into this game and I'm still learning. Oh, there's stuff. Yeah, it's right. still yeah. tutorializing. Are you in Hawaii wild. yet? Oh, also, apparently, I'm sorry. Folks said that they mentioned that it's Honolulu a lot. So, okay. Okay. Oh. I mean, yeah, well, I, I think they like Hawaii might, City. I mean, yeah, yeah they <laughs> might have mentioned that like at the start and just haven't said yeah, because yeah, it is always just Hawaii. But, yeah, I am. Where did I leave off? Uh, I left off um, uh, searching for Akane. I'm like finding out where she works. In her oh, theater. right. Okay. That's where yep. I am in the story. Got it. Okay, cool. Very good, folks. Uh, more giant bomb cast after this. We'll get into the news. See what kind of news Grub has made and curated for the show. All this and more after the break. Be right back.
Welcome back to the Giant Bombcast. We're having fun here. And who cares? Who cares if my neighbors decided to mow their lawn right as we're recording the next <laughs> I don't part care. of the podcast? Shit, man, I don't care. You know? It's their prerogative. It's their lawn. They can do That's whatever right. they want. Can't uh, well, Maybe. Um, I guess so. We'll, sh we'll share the street. Um, we've got news. We've got Jeff Grubb. Let's do this. All right. First story, everybody. Uh, on the return from WrestleMania, Jan Ochoa's flight has been diverted because his plane is full of shit. From the yeah, Twitter account yeah. of Jan Jerome Ochoa. Welp, flight home is getting diverted because it is literally full of poop emoji. Oh. Wait, maybe it's just full of the poop emoji. Now, listen, you're right. That's why I said it. Mm. I wanted that to be considered. A sponsored oh, this emoji is very, flight. This is very important. We have someone on the ground. Uh, follow up tweet here from one Mike Minotti. My bad. Oh, Mike, oh, you did it my, again. Mike. You get it. Dang Your it, bud. Again, dude. Source of everyone's problems. Oh, we know. Oh, poops. <laughs> oh, beans. Um, Damn, I've never heard of this. Did he get into the air? I mean, I think so. The well, flight diverted. It's diverted. diverted. Yeah, that implies. Well, so much poop came out, fly above yeah, the toilet. The, the Randy from South Park. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they can't. They can't just like uh, you know. Uh, this is my Dan Riker question. They can't just like open up a hatch, <laughs> right? And just let drop the poop. The poop That's what it yeah. must. It must be that the toilet has become a biohazard, and they don't have the ability to clean. Like legitimately, they don't have the ability to clean the toilet such that another person can use it. Right, but my what I'm saying is like certainly there's some sort of like exit hatch where where they dump the whole <laughs> right just, a, just a of ball of shit just falls down <laughs> yeah yeah like can't they just mathematically determine where the payload would land over some sort of like <laughs> yeah I mean, we know when the eclipse is going to happen that's like sort of fly over right. yeah, yeah there's a lot I mean, of like, land. There's a reason we call them the flyover state. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Poop on states. We literally want to dump our shit on them. Uh, the three tabs I hope in, have opened that aren't the news are uh, my, my taxes, Jen mm -hmm. talking about this is shit plane, and the script to Jurassic Park. So that's the, that's my <laughs> life over that's here. Just cool. That's actually cool. That's a trifecta. That's yeah, very that's, rarely achieved. I, listen, I did shape my life so it would be exactly like this. So I'm yeah. glad I'm here. Uh -huh. Absolutely. All right. Don't do your taxes. Whatever. Uh, they're already done. I just got to pay them now. So son of a bitch. Mm. Um, all right. Getting to the news. Uh, there's a rumored new SOCOM game that could be in the works. Uh, another entry in the SOCOM franchise might be in the works. Basically... Someone spotted on a late actor's resume, uh, I believe the actor is David Veach, uh, who passed away a couple years ago, but they looked on his resume, I, I suppose on LinkedIn, and saw a mention of a game called SOCOM 111. Uh, people were like, well, maybe he just put on, uh, like him or his, his representatives put a game on there that he'd been in previously, and they just didn't know what it was called. But they went back, looked at all the credits for all the previous games. They didn't see David Veach mentioned in any of them. So they're thinking, okay, maybe he did some work, which uh, apparently this work is voice acting and performance capture. Uh, and maybe it's for like a SOCOM show or something or, or, or something along those lines. People have not been able to track it down. So based on this, people are assuming we are getting a new SOCOM. My opinion is that's pretty weak. It's probably not happening, at least not based on this. <laughs> Yeah. How do you all feel about SOCOM and what do you think about Who this? Who cares? Yeah. Just, wow. Touch grass is what yeah, I think. A little bit. Wow. I, Jan is rolling I, in his grave say, right Jan, now. Biggest SOCOM fan I know. I don't even know if he likes SOCOM as much as he likes the idea of SOCOM. I, I'm really. I mean, I like SOCOM. I, like, I yeah, I like SOCOM that. as an idea from the '90s, and like that's it. Is it even? Is it? It's from the 2000s. 2000s. It, I mean, it might as well be the it's, '90s. I, anything I know before you mean. 2010 is uh -huh. the '90s. As far as I'm <laughs> yeah. yeah, no. Every, my entire SOCOM experience is that on in the eighth grade we did a, a trip up the five uh, to Sacramento, and then we came back down, and half of the bus, the boys, was playing so common the plate whatever on so common on the psp yeah. Yeah. yeah and then the back half which was the girls and the gays 
Um, and I just was in the back there, not really thinking about what that meant. But I was back there. <laughs> and I was, we just were playing like, Mario like, Kart. <laughs> and we were all playing something. Mario Kart. Um, oh, well, shit, I would have been back there. Yeah, yeah I would have so, been like, back there with Mario Kart. Make you, think, yeah. make, some, make you think, do some digging. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, who cares? Yeah, okay. I mean, no, like, honestly, I don't think though, this is anything. Like, no, I don't think it's a story. Right. I, okay, whether or not this is happening, do, do y'all think that SOCOM has the juice these days? No. No. Yeah. Siphon Filter has more juice than SOCOM. <laughs> yeah, I would say, yeah. So, like, do that. Yeah, and, and, I, and let's not, like, you know, have to disturb the grave of some actor in the process. Yeah, that's the part that is the most nuts it to me. It is yeah. kind of nuts like, that this is what this rumor is based on. Yes. Uh, and it's also like, like why that. are they... Imagine being so down bad for SOCOM that you're like, let me think of a guy who could be in SOCOM. <laughs> and then you yeah. find this dude who is dead, and then you're like, Ugh, it's just nuts. I don't yeah, think so. It's nuts. What? I'm trying to think of what a new SOCOM would even accomplish right. for Sony at this it, point. Because... Is, it a, is it a PlayStation 5 and maybe PC game? Yeah. And, yeah. and you have to go up against but... Fortnite that's everywhere or whatever, or, or PUBG yeah. that's everywhere, uh, Call of Duty that's everywhere. Well, that that's my big thing. Is like so many people who don't know what SOCOM exactly. is as a video game series are going to be like, oh, well, this is just a Call of Duty knockoff. Right. And they're not going to Everyone under 25 would just be like, huh? Yeah, like, like SOCOM was important back in the day because of what it did for multiplayer gaming on its respective platforms. Yes. On PS2, it was you know your doorway to online shooters. Right, with the with PSP. the you know with the headset, so you could talk to people. That's mm -hmm. where people right. first communicated. A lot of people's first communication with other people online with voice was in SOCOM. Yeah, exactly. Or the PSP version, like Nikki mentioned, you know, like kids would play it on the bus and like older people would, I think one of them had online, you would do that. But nowadays, it just feels like there's no reason for it to exist outside of some people have asked for it. But I don't know. Do, like, do Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 3. Uh, That's what Graw, I want. Graw yeah. 3. Graw 3. Graw, Graw 3. Do it, What cowards. if they put the airplanes it. in it, too? Called it Grox. 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 <laughs> Dash 3. <laughs> um, yeah. Would you prefer them to make another SOCOM game or another Kill Zone? Oh, I Kill would... Kill Zone. Personally, I would definitely prefer SOCOM because, like, I, I, think I know what SOCOM I just said Kill makes Zone it too. seem like nobody cares, but SOCOM actually has a unique play style because it's uh, tactical it's strategic. Yeah. No, kill zone four is the one i'm actually going to get into <laughs> yeah, okay yeah for sure but... <laughs> it, it hasn't happened really up to this point but this is the one <laughs> this is the, the one, one. Four times uh, the charm uh well anyway yeah. shout out to reddit user kekin kekin cock for uh going through yeah, david get beach's job. resume you say that uh, touch grass kekin kekin cock <laughs> Oh, okay. it, yeah all right well moving on uh two upcoming <laughs> playstation plus classic titles have seemingly been revealed a new trope this i'm bringing this one up because i think it's weird uh a new trophy list for me uh, medieval has been spotted suggesting that ps1 title could be soon made available on P playstation plus and that is like the ps1 Wait. version of medieval not was, the remake that they did for ps4 okay, i was gonna say didn't they oh, just okay. redo that game yeah right. they did just redo it yeah. right and that's so that but they're not doing that one for, P right. for playstation plus classics which they wouldn't do it for classics but um and then uh the the other well the other game doesn't matter because that's the one i wanted to talk about uh yeah no, but, sick yeah I, why, why i don't know why just, would you do that i don't know why would you do that yeah it's a, a little bit strange it's good from a perspective of it, good to keep this game play it like the original version of this game playable on more things great i, awesome. I, I do remember the other game this one i'm like yeah that, i'll play this rebel assault 2 the hidden empire that, that one's like the very mm. fmv one mm. uh, it's got some fun stuff in there but um how do you all feel about the subscription services that you are or are not subscribed to these days, including PlayStation Plus, uh, Xbox, um, Game Pass, things like that? Do you guys have all of them still? Because I, I just was on my PlayStation 5 the other day, and I was about to like play a game. Oh, yeah, this is a yeah. PS Plus game I got. And I, I ended my subscription. Yeah. I'm like, we, oh, I'm just going to turn this off rather than resubscribe. So you, so when you turn off PlayStation Plus, don't you lose? You lose everything. You lose access to the games that you got through the PlayStation Plus subscription previously, and then but, you could lose access to like their library of games. Yeah. But when you resubscribe, you get them back. That's right. Yes. Do you? Yes, you do. You yeah. do. You do. Okay. Because yeah. I remember there wasn't there like a time where there there was a really 
if you don't strange caveat the, or the, like that, not it wasn't terrible it's just like if you're not subscribed then you can't uh like claim them and then if they're yeah. gone you can't go back in time and claim them they're just gone yeah okay okay that's what, okay. It, is. That's yeah. what it is so it so was you, weird yeah. compared okay. to uh games with gold over on xbox because on xbox you just had those games permanently in your library when you right where this was never like went away a moving this, target. This is, yeah. yeah, this is actual like subscriptions as we know them nowadays, where you need to claim them in the period, and then you only have it when you are subscribed. And, and but then, and on top of that, then there's the library of games where you don't have to claim them. It's just like the library, like it's game, the like, Game Pass, right? And it's they have it's multiple. So things. fucking conf- the it's PlayStation confusing. side is so confusing. Um, I only I have Game Pass Ultimate until the sun explodes i think i literally have game pass (laughs) ultimate until like 2026 yeah because i like i there they remember when they were doing that thing for a dollar for a dollar yeah yeah yeah. so i went to costco and i bought two years or three years of of gold yeah and then i canceled my game pass put the live account and then i so i i'm good on game pass until 2026 thank you 10 cent for paying for that <laughs> um and then i also have the nintendo family plan which mm. i don't i don't really know why i have that because i i super don't use any of that mm. but there's like eight people in that like right. under, or not eight but there's like a handful of people under that umbrella right. so like i feel obligated to keep it's a couple bucks that. each so it's nothing Who oh like, if you go online so, with Mario it is Kart, so like, funny that you think i have the gumption to ask these people who are under the umbrella to uh-huh. give me the money that, 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 oh that, you're that, the one uh-huh. you're the honey bee pal okay. yeah yeah that's yeah, how yeah, it always yeah, goes yeah, we'll split yeah, this and i'm like i'm yeah. not gonna hunt these assholes down i'm never gonna do that i think you down for eight dollars right come on and like is it a lot of money yes like <laughs> but like i i can't i can't be fucked to do that and then i don't have playstation plus like if someone is like i want to play like if we play hell divers this week like i'll have to re-up on playstation plus for yeah. the month and then i'll cancel it again i just like don't have subscriptions really in general because i just buy them as necessary like it which I gotta download all my PS Plus saves because hey, fun fact: you can't access your cloud saves unless you are currently yeah, subscribed to PS Plus, which is yeah, dumb. That's, that's slimy really dumb. as fuck. It's so yeah. slimy, yeah. But um, I mean, I I believe Nintendo does it too. I think it's dumb there, for the record. Uh, but yeah, I don't subscribe to PS Plus because I just usually don't play on console. I'm not subscribed to Game Pass because I subscribe when there's a game I want to play on Game Pass. You know, I just you know drop the ten bucks, whatever. It's cheaper than buying the game. And then, I mean, really anything else, even in life, I kind of just don't subscribe to much. Uh, Occasionally, I'll do some bundle. If it's like this and this, and we'll give you a discount, it's like three months for five bucks or something. I'll try that. But yeah, usually, I don't know. I just, it, it, Uh, nothing I need really meshes with that. I, I would argue most of these subscription services, maybe, I think Xbox righted the ship in a way where like they, successfully elevated the idea of um game pass as this sort of like day and date thing right Mm -hmm. where they were able to like equate it to to that sort of thing so i think they probably won the messaging battle whereas the playstation experience is mostly in limbo right the playstation experience is you get that when you need to play online and yeah and then, that's the barrier, and then, right? and then like you know 10 percent of those people are like looking at the deal like all right i'm going to get i'm going to get it so i can play online with my friends and then they look at the tiers and like oh if i pay a little bit extra i get some extra shit yeah i'll do that i think it's like it's just a step up for the people they've already converted for the same reason that they've been converting people since the beginning which is right i sure. want to play call of duty and sure that's it so um yeah. Well, you don't even need PS Plus for free to play games. Anymore, no, not right? free to play games, right? No, not no, free yeah, to that's play. Right. Call, so the, the, in the traditional most, Call of Duty, yeah. Right, right, yeah. So like Warzone and then like Fortnite and whatnot. So most people nowadays probably actually aren't paying for PS Plus on PlayStation. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's been some numbers out there. It's like kind of pretty steady around. I want to say forty million ish, um, which is okay. a big number. But I guess for nothing, yeah, that's, that's pretty still, good. That's still yeah. a lot of people. That's still a lot of people. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I think that's for, right. Remember, I was I was trying to explain to someone. Remember when PlayStation Network was down for like a month and a half? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I was trying to explain like to Jones. a person who is like, who is like so thoroughly unplugged. Thank you for your service, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I was trying to explain it to someone, 
And I like, I still felt like I was downplaying how crazy that was. It was was so crazy. A month and a half. Just a nuts. Just nuts. Like, they just couldn't. It was off. Yep. (laughs) They got hacked so bad, they unplugged everything. And that was their solution. So uh, I <laughs> I remember learning about that like the following year because I played on 360 at that point. Mm-hmm. I was like, fucking <laughs> oh, yeah, this didn't affect problem. me. That's why I didn't hear about it. <laughs> okay. Yep, that was yeah, it was a, a wild time. Uh all right. Uh seventy dollar ga- games may go the way of the dodo, believes Saber CEO. Saber Interactive CEO Matthew Karch believes that seventy dollars games will eventually become obsolete as developers seek to cut costs and risks in an increasingly challenging AAA games market. Saber with studios like Nimble Giant, 3D Realms, and possibly 4A Games, it depends on what happens with uh, them and Embracer, is uh, seen as a middle market publisher between independent studios and AAA publishers. Karch cites Helldivers 2 as an example and explains that the upcoming Space Marine, Marine 2 is priced at $70 due to concerns over perceptions of poor quality. He predicts that games will become more affordable over time due to the high risks associated with expensive AAA titles and the need for reduced costs. Karch acknowledges the major shift in AAA development uh, with thousands of jobs cut in the industry uh, and, and basically says, so, yeah, I, I, I get what's happening there. But um, I, yeah, let's do a check in on this $70 games. We are a few years into this uh, uh, console generation where $70 games became the norm. Um, it feels like we have not backslid in any real way. And yeah, there are other options out there like a Helldivers 2 that comes out. It's like, yeah, we're a $40 game because we want to get as many people playing mm-hmm. online as possible. That feels like a, a notable exception to the rule. And I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with this. I feel like these companies are going to get to take as much pr- profit as they possibly can. And that means keeping costs for the consumer as high as possible. What do you all think? And I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I just think that like the, the way that the economy on this works is that the game comes out at $70, but it so rarely is $70 forever. Exactly. Yeah. That it's like, and they, they build that into the financial modeling that they do when they price that, when they figure out how much the game is going to cost from the jump, right? Like they know that three months later, they're going to put the game on sale at 20% off, 15% off, whatever, whatever, Mm -hmm. with only Nintendo being the company that's like, no like <laughs> this shit is gold like you it, it holds its value forever like we don't know how to lower it yeah we, yeah we that button yeah, broke we, yeah. the button we've broke never seen down. the button so <laughs> we're not gonna start looking for it now and it's just like yeah like okay like i don't know i feel like if people for people for whom the ten dollar jump was a big gap like a big jump already probably weren't buying games at launch yeah. anyway so but do you think I that think... those people now buy the game when it drops to 40 instead of like waiting for 30 like do you think uh, do you think that like maybe by like lifting it up to yeah, 70 it slides up but like everyone sort of slides up a couple mm. percentage points i think that's what they're that, i think that, that gets I, put in the model a little bit not everyone obviously you're yeah any sort of price pressure is going to be felt by some percentage of, of the audience absolutely so um I, I think what it really this uh, uh, Karch over at Saber, Intera- Saber Interactive is getting at is that developers are going to have to get more creative with how they present their games. Because that idea yeah. of like Space Marine 2 needs to be $70 because if we re- release it for $50, people are going to get it in their heads that it's not a real big video game, not a big boy video for game. Sure. It's a video game, but right. not a big boy video game. And it's like, okay, yeah. If you are in that situation where you can't even like put out at the price you want to because you're afraid of perception, you're going to have to like begin telling new stories as these companies going forward. But, you know, we we do, we are very like the price is the thing we think about the most. You know, we were having that conversation about the subscription stuff. And it's like, that's what we're thinking about. It's like, yeah, the cost and, and who cares what's in there? The cost is what I'm worried about. And so I think, uh, yeah, these companies are going to have to get more creative. I don't just I just don't know what that looks like. It's going to take time to figure that out, though. I think I think Nikki was right though. I think if you were already not buying full price games, the ten dollars didn't change anything. Oh yeah, and for sure. I I yeah. say this as someone who you know had grew up having to like constantly sell games in yeah, order to same. afford the next game, and so like even penny pitching up until honestly relatively recently, uh, Grub, I've told you all the time, like I still like buy and sell physical games, like if I have to, to yeah, to save the money, and. 
I don't know. Even to me, I'm like, ten dollars doesn't change much. Like that's not like a world of difference. I was either gonna buy this game at launch or I was gonna wait either way. I don't think it's moved the needle that much. Granted, there's you know, there's all the economics we could talk about about how that ten dollars isn't going to the people who need those ten dollars. For sure. Oh yeah. Which is a whole different conversation. But I just think most people this hasn't affected them. Like I am fortunate enough now to, you know, get a lot of games and not having to pay for them. But then when my friends want to play with me, like, say, uh, Call of Duty, when they they really want to play Modern Warfare 3 with me, based on the way I was talking about it, I was like, guys, you know, it's $70 yeah. for, like, basically DLC. And they were like, yeah, but this is, this is like, my purchase for the fall. So, like, sure. w- whatever. It sucks. But, yeah, I'll pay the 70 bucks to play with you. So that, that just hasn't really changed. And, yeah, I, 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 think- I don't think the small change has affected people's purchasing decisions. Yep. Um, I think it's oh God, also Becca. like uh, psychology too. I think like the price, is, you know, it kind of gets built into like the optics of like what the um, the sort of like average game buyer kind of like you know does in their heads of like oh you know in terms of budgeting and I mean you tell us Grub like the uh, spent is spending down in a way that like would point to I mean I know what Karch is saying because. Um, it's more of like, hey, uh, the market can't uh, sustain a seventy dollar price just for from like what we've seen in the last you know six months or so, right? Like, w- um, but I but I do think you're still gonna have uh, you're still gonna have people charging seventy dollars for certain games as like a matter of oh, yeah. principle. You know what yeah. I mean? As a matter of like, this game is without a doubt the full maximum retail price that we can charge, right? Like this is worth it. The $70 makes us conf- uh, display confidence that it's worth it. Uh, I don't know. There's a lot of contributing factors. I think the point of this is more saying that the uh, middle of the road sort of stuff, right? Yeah. Like the games that sit in between AAA and indie. Um, yeah. Might not yeah. be able to get away with it. And, and- you have to when you like think about pricing those games though right like it is you have to be you're beating you're going up against free like this story is in direct conversation with the um with the story from a couple of weeks ago that was like people are playing games that are over five years old yeah the, the usually 60 percent of games that people spend their time on or the 60 percent amount of time people spend on games are on games that are more than six years old yeah yeah so it's like they've that's that money they're not even thinking about it right like it's already been spent it is so far in the past so like you have to go up against games that people have already spent money on or they are free Yep. And I think that's, uh, so my, uh, back there to answer your question about like, oh, like our, our sales down, not a lot of games, uh, but I think what the, what happens is the problems get exacerbated. So like a suicide squad comes out and it, when it, it misses, it misses hard. And yeah. I think that people make that decision pretty like, uh, firmly because hey, $70 looks a little bit bigger than $60. But if it was a game you were going to buy anyhow, people pay that money. So I think that it, it just makes the gap even wider, which I think then makes these games that are in between in like, you know, the biggest games and the littlest games feel like they have no home because they really don't. I think that's the reality is that these games are getting too expensive to make to like sort of be in the middle of the road. You need to be a bigger hit, um, you know, and yeah, the, obviously guess, there's, there's a couple exceptions there. Like I think Dead Island 2 is, is going to be the one I keep going back to where it's like that one probably made a lot of sense based on its budget. It just didn't make a lot of sense when it was under Embracer. I yeah. guess I didn't really think of that when now that we have seventy dollar games, that means projections are going to naturally be higher. And so yeah, like you said, when it misses, it's going to miss even harder than yeah. if it was a sixty dollar game and they missed those sales. It's like infinite growth is fucking bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Who would have thought? It doesn't, seem, it doesn't sound right to me, Nikki. I don't know. It seems it seems fake and unsustainable <laughs> <laughs> to um, me. <laughs> Every day a new baby's born, they can buy my game. So, so no one right. ever dies. So. <laughs> no one ever dies. That's the, yeah, that is so crucial. Yeah. Is that nobody are born ever with money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nobody ever dies, and everyone has the same amount of money. Yeah, and babies are born with fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> ready? Seventy dollars. Excuse me. Every please. baby is born with a gaming budget. <laughs> 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 All right, uh, let's get to some real news now. Uh, Star Wars Outlaws, the story trailer came out. 
The release date is August 30th. Uh, it is coming to, of course, Xbox consoles, PlayStation 5, Amazon Luna, and PC via the Ubisoft launcher. Um, I did not get a chance to watch the story trailer. It, got, it launched right when we were starting the show, but I'll check it out. I'm excited about this one. Uh, there was rumors it was like even going to come a, a little bit like earlier than that, but it's like, oh no, August 30th is still way faster than I was Summertime, really expecting. Maybe? Yeah, Summertime, maybe? Summertime right still. Around the corner. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, I pulled it up and was looking at it in the corner of my eye while we we're talking about the last topic. again. it looks good. Like I, I, I don't I'm not the Star Wars nerd that Grub is. So I'm sure you yeah. would pull more out of it. So I'm interested to see what you had to say once you take a look at and you know can listen to it and everything. But man, that's a pretty game. Yeah, I mean, massive, they, they, right? they make good looking games. It's in Snowdrop, right? Snowdrop. Yeah. 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 Good. So engine. That, that's a theme with uh, Ubisoft there. So I'm looking forward to it. speaking of uh, memberships like Boy, playing that with Ubisoft Plus, that'll probably be a good deal. Yeah, good point. Right, yeah. And it's like you could probably get through that game pretty quickly and have your one month of Ubisoft Plus. and get, yeah, get yeah, Played worth. Avatar and stuff, yep. uh, and Prince of Persia, go for it. Does anyone um, sidle up to a, the side of a, like a speeder door and then shut it? <laughs> I don't think I saw that. No? Damn. No. It's yeah, not, not, not Snowdrop to me then. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, clapped so hard when that that division tra- like first division gameplay when they when they when that dude fucking closed that door I was like this yeah, is video games are, did it, video game, fucking, I have no idea why that fucking did it for me I was like video games are back for me the the first division trailer was all always like wait they're gonna do the thing aren't they where it's like every Ubisoft trailer back then was like okay here's a mission here's a mission and then we're gonna pull out and you're in a world and there's yeah. other people yeah. oh my god yeah it's like yeah okay you've done this 15 <laughs> times now it's yeah. losing the so effect I, don't you especially though when they have the gamer speak going on oh yes friendly mm-hmm. division yeah. had that they were like a little bit toned down but they still had that yeah Good, yeah. good trailers. Ubisoft uh, doesn't know what they're doing. Um, <laughs> Battlefield 2042 is ending, uh, and EA has laid out plans for the future of the Battlefield franchise. Battlefield 2042's seventh season marks the end of the game's active development. EA and DICE are shifting their focus to future projects, with Motive Studio joining the franchise to work on upcoming titles in the series. The decision comes after two years of updates and improvements to 2042, Man, it's already been two years, which launched in a rough state. I but, thought it was longer. I thought it was, it was way long. longer. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 It, seems, it seems like a lifetime. Perception of time is, is, that a, is like, a weird thing. Is that like the tornado war game? Like, that's the tornado that the war game. Tornado. Yes, okay. yeah. that's yeah. the one where yeah. you that fight was, the fucking tornadoes. Yeah, yeah, that was tw- that was 2013, buddy. I don't know. What you're <laughs> about. Uh, Motive Studio, known for the Dead Space remake and Star Wars Squadrons, will collaborate with existing Battlefield Studios worldwide to create a cohesive universe encompassing both multiplayer and single player experiences the studio is also continuing development on its upcoming iron man game so motive is the latest studio kind of get sucked into the battlefield uh, vortex uh, that's tough yeah so it's, i mean it's you what you really to- want is all of your studios to like fall in turn into call of duty support studios yeah we, we got really well we got for activism and, 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 yeah. and for battlefield which is you know kind of having some rough go of it yeah. lately yeah. um that's the that's, that's the one tough. that I always wondered about. Battlefield was like, even with twenty forty two. I'm like, yeah, that game's gonna come out. It's, it better be free to play because you're in a world yeah. of a bunch of free to play yeah. shooters. And then it's exactly. like it was not. It's like, oh, oh, you think you could still do this? You're Battlefield. You're not Call of Duty. And we yeah. we learned that a long time ago. Even Call of Duty's not Call of Duty. Yeah, right, but yeah. I mean, Call of Duty still can sell a seventy dollar game no, every year. Right, and even but even so, like you are starting from such a disadvantage yeah, out right. of the gate like you're not even yeah yeah, yeah and, the and they moment, have the freedom the moment yeah. has so thoroughly passed right like the moment where the the market was strong enough to support two of these first military first person shooters at the same time that oh, yeah, there was a time there was like a time. yeah but like that moment is gone mm-hmm. like i think that window has closed can you hmm. for me mm-hmm. name mm-hmm. any story beat from a single player battlefield oh absolutely not maybe the maybe oh, battlefield one I, I i was like the one where you go to rescue the tank and i'm like nope that's call of duty <laughs> <laughs> maybe battlefield one like the first thing i would i would recognize it could not reiterate it to you yeah at all that's tough we should like, uh, can we still just can we, don't make those can we play co-op bad company too uh is that does that still work i would do that, that. one was good that was I did good. like that one. I'd like to go. I back love that. that. There's probably a way to do that. Battlefield three, 
Battlefield 3 was the best one. They should have just every year they should just re re release. I played a lot 3. of three back in the day. Yeah, because at that time it was so distinct from Call of Duty, it did feel like a different experience. And was the theme the song one? fucking bangs. Which was the one that had the like persistent online connection issues for like six months? Was that four? Medal of Honor. I no. don't remember. Oh yeah. man, I remember I Medal of Honor. Hell yeah. I think it I think it was four, it was four. That sounds correct. Um, there, man, that was like the the PlayStation One era of like, oh my God, War is amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. World War Two was like so important to relitigate. Oh, like we have to. We have to. What about that E three oh. where they had Hardline and they're just like fucking no, cops, cop right? Line? Let's just yeah. like let's that like was, do yeah. some cop shit in L A. The fucked the fucked up thing about Hardline though. <laughs> He said I yeah. did really like it. It's got it's yeah, got it something. There was something about the scale of those maps that felt a little like and you could like put on the bad boys tighter. Like, yeah, put up, yeah. yeah, fucking sick. Yeah. Totally. All right. Uh the App Store guidelines are now going to allow game emulators. Uh, Apple Finally. has updated its App Store guidelines. Uh, music streaming apps in the EU can now redirect users to external websites and game emulators are now allowed on Apple platforms. The changes come after the EU Commission fined Apple for abusing its market position. Spotify and Apple Music are mentioned in the context of the EU Commission ruling. The update also includes changes uh, such as allowing mini apps and game streaming. Um, so, hey, that's that's pretty cool. Emulators are legal, and they were just like, we're not going to allow you to do this. Um, uh, and that was, that, was, that was the end of it. And Apple's draconian about this stuff. They just completely shut these yeah. things down. Uh, this is a good sign. And it, uh, once again, it's like, man, EU regulation, shaking them loose and forcing them to do something that's not just dumb as hell. Uh, so that, that's that's really cool to see. Um, Android, on the other hand, like emulation has kind of had like a backsliding because of all the Nintendo stuff. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of emulators are like afraid to put their stuff on an Android now. So it's like it was right. the Wild that, West. You know, that's Google wild. Is, Google's getting really weird about the Play Store. Yeah, Google in, in a way weird. that like I don't really Google's a weird company, but like they're they're getting weird about the Play Store in a way that is like they're trying as Apple is getting their ass handed to them in Europe and, and here and here. I have yeah. so little faith in the Department of Justice. Mm -hmm. but, like, I'm, like, crossing, you, I'm, crossing, you, I'm so thoroughly crossing my fingers, but like I, I'm with you, too. But the deal, this is the first time that I've read like a DOJ like me too diatribe where they're like they're kind of making really like, they got good yeah. Lucid I, yeah points like yeah i'm like hey someone under 50 is yes, working there now absolutely you know? is this about the, the green bubbles yes. yeah it's, it's, Hell yeah. it's, it's outlined yeah. in it too and, and and the watch it's like they but they yeah. make like very cohesive arguments in a way where you're like did they fucking outsource this like yeah it feels <laughs> it, it feels legitimately informed Yes, in a way that like, <laughs> Why? Yeah. Didn't expect it, that from like them. we are slowly moving past the generation of the flashing twelve o'clock on the VCR, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? And like, this is where we're at. It's like, oh my god, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll uh, see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, and uh, emu emulation, at least, is going to soften on the App Store, and that's good. That what that really means is a lot more development will happen in that scene as people will be like, "Hey, we could do stuff on Apple now." That's uh, kind of a big place to put these things out at. So, keeping people interested in making emulators is going to be important in the long run. And that'll be something there. Xbox is moving full speed ahead on the next gen hardware. Microsoft is diligently developing the next generation of Xbox hardware, aiming for the most significant technological advancement it's ever had. Uh, Xbox president Sarah Bond confirmed this, hinting at a new uh, Xbox Series hardware this year. Images of a white digital-only Xbox a Series X resurfaced recently. Xbox is also investing in game preservation and forward compatibility. Sony's mention of PlayStation 5's late life cycle indicates that my Xbox Series X slash S is also approaching the end of its current generation. The key point here being like, so we've known about the hardware that they were like going to announce later this year. They, they mentioned that and they also mentioned they would have the biggest technological technological advancement so far. There's been a recent thing where now Sarah Bond has talked about this backward compatibility team and it's... Arm. 
Arm. Uh, well, arm. yeah, and it seems like arm. it might have to do with arm. 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 So yeah. they had a, they had a backward compatibility team that got a lot of stuff up and running on uh, on the current Xbox Series X and S, uh, and mm-hmm. before the Xbox One from Xbox 360 and Xbox games. They've basically cashed out what they can do with with those games for whatever reason, mostly legal reasons. Um, so they they wound wound down that team where like that team is was no longer like an active thing. They're bringing it back up, and maybe that's because they got some Activision games now that makes some sense. It seems like they are they are setting this up for a larger scope than that. And to me, that suggests, well, hey, you have a bunch of games that run, now run on Xbox Series X and S. What if the architecture changed? Would you be ready for that? This seems like this is a step to get them ready for that, whatever that might look like. And to me, it still sounds like that might be ARM. I don't know. Sean, I know you're curious about this kind of stuff. What do you think? No, I definitely think that's what they're heading towards because, if, you know, if all those lead documents are true and they are eventually moving towards that architecture, they're going to need a translation layer for the current games. Like, for if anyone doesn't know, basically what we're talking about here is if, if they're moving from what's effectively a PC processor to the type of processor that's in your phone, you know, those two program types are not compatible. You can't install an EXE on your phone or whatever. So you need a translation layer like say the Steam Deck uses to play Windows games on Linux, you know, a different operating system. That's what they're going to have to do eventually if they do transition to ARM, uh, like say Apple did for all, all of their products now, which, you know, Apple has proven. Valve it's proven so Steam fucking Deck. good. <laughs> yeah, it's, I just I just got the M1 MacBook Air. It's carriers. so fucking yeah. good. Like M1 or like the M series of chips yeah. is like... I I I I feel like I have not experienced a jump like that since um Mac went from power PC to Intel. To Intel. Mm-hmm. And even when I was a kid I was like, "Oh shit. Like yep. we're yeah. we're fucking playing with different gas now." But like as an ad- a cogent adult, this Intel to M like crazy yeah yeah this, and like this is not fucking kill i cannot kill this laptop yeah i can do <laughs> i can do anything on this macbook air <laughs> yeah. for like 10 hours and yeah. it won't die if i do yeah. nothing but have chrome open and um and messages it's fucking forever it's a yeah. it's so good so that's th- the beauty of having effectively mobile architecture in a bigger uh yeah higher power device the power it, efficiency it's yeah it's still so efficient that it's just basically using all that for battery life or what yeah. have you or lower power consumption it's really cool and by the way you know we talk about like resident evil 4 on iphone and stuff nowadays the only reason you're getting stuff like that is because apple's u- ecosystem is unified now it's all yes. running on the same chip it's yeah. all running on the m chips so they make that stuff for mac os but then they're like yeah, but also it just runs on like, uh, you know, the the iPhones and iPads mm-hmm. so like with a little bit of work that we put in. So why not also put it there? That's why you get stuff like that. And that's what Xbox is eventually going to be moving towards if they hand that direction is, yeah, any form, any physical form that a quote unquote Xbox can take will now run all these games, including these legacy ones through backwards compatibility. Yeah, and it's um so people are going to be wondering, hey, you talk a lot about uh, power efficiency and mobile devices. Well, th- 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 real quick, those M1 chips, the M- M3 now are in their desktop PCs as well over at Apple. They're in mm-hmm. all of their computers uh, across their yep. entire stack, and they're very, very powerful. If you get like the you know the desktop or like the very, very top of the line, uh, top of the line MacBook Pro or whatever, um, the trajectory that these two things x86 and mac are, are arm are on is that the arm is getting more powerful faster than x86 is getting more efficient uh the, yeah. right now x86 is still way more powerful if you have built something directly for it and take advantage of everything it can do sure um but that's not going to last for much longer we are pretty much getting to a point where like right now m3 is running things faster than x86 because things are built right directly for it and they could take more advantage of it and apple's really good at that um but uh, one day it feels like arm is going to be able to enable that for uh, across the board for everybody and at that point you're going to be sticking with x86 because it's what you always used why would you want to be in that situation at least having the opportunity to make the decision to go to arm is going to be a position that all these companies are going to want to be in and if one company does that and the other one doesn't and that enables them to make a very very powerful handheld gaming device that like takes over 
they're going to have a huge advantage. So you don't want to be left behind on that. That's what all this is really about. So right. x86 processors are kind of stagnant at this point. That's right. why you see trickle down effects like NVIDIA move NVIDIA moving into uh, frame generation on their uh, graphics cards of like generating frames through AI and everything like that to boost your frame rates. It's because CPUs can't keep up in the high end right. uh, PC gaming space. It's also why you have things like why the PS5 is in the situation it's in and going into PS5 Pro. Why is the processor not improved? They could have. Theoretically, it would have broken backwards compatibility. So they would have had to put some work in there. But at the same time, in terms of like cost for them to produce, the efficiency jump hasn't been there yet for them to move on to a more efficient processor that would be better at the job. And so, yeah, just all the advancements are happening in ARM. I think that's why you're going to see more companies doing it like Xbox. Also, at least in on the like the M series of chips, they work the way I, I think computers or I, the way I thought computers worked, which is you just put more stuff on top of it. Like the only like the difference between an M1 regular or like an m3 regular and an m1 pro and an m1 max is just how many of the chips there are yeah. on yes. top of the chip mm. <laughs> they just put them next to each other and they're, the like, oh, they're like three of yeah. them right <laughs> like, it's, it's three times as good because we put three of them in here yes. it's like oh okay like sick <laughs> the uh and uh, for the x86 those chips are pretty much getting as big as they can really get this is the yeah. limited limiting yeah. factor that, that sean was talking about so the new technology is going to be 3d stacking which is like taking these little chiplets and instead of putting them side by side they're going to start stacking them on top of one another and that'll have it's I mean, they've already started doing this in a lot of ways but they're going to do this across all those little chip different chiplets that are that are in there and that there'll have, yeah there'll be a lot of like thermal concerns with all that stuff so uh, we'll see if it's able to keep up with ARM. But uh, as far as I think uh, Xbox is concerned, being able to have the option to go in the direction of ARM when they so choose, it's going to be very important. And that translation layer is, gonna, layer is going to unlock it's that for so them. It's so important. Right. They can't, cool. You can't not have backward compatibility. You, like, listen, you want to change yeah. sh shift over to ARM, fine. But the games I bought better still work, and they know that. Yeah. Uh, last thing here, uh, well, one more thing after this, I guess. Uh, <laughs> the U.S. video game hardware market peaked in 2008. This was a tweet from Matt Piscatella <laughs> over at Circana, and I just like wanted, huh. to, I wanted to bring this up. He's like, share of console purchases is increasingly swinging to older folks. Zoomers care less about consoles than prior gens, and Generation Alpha, which we can't call them that, uh, may never care. <laughs> is that Dib? That's, uh, that's Dib? Dib, I think, that's yes. Dib, yeah. Uh, every video game company is thinking about expansion beyond on console because they have to and there's a chart here that you guys can see where it's just uh basically consoles uh, video game hardware spending in terms of dollars reached a peak in 2008 and it, we've not come close to that peak even when even like with inflation because these are not adjusted for infl inflation so we've not come close to that uh nikki grayson giant bomb what can i do for did you did anything else happen in 2008 yeah, so listen, there were some issues with uh, the whole economy, but honestly, it's, it's there's a couple of things that happened. It was one, the economy just completely fell apart, uh, fell apart globally, and also the mm -hmm. iPhone came out. Yeah, and, the phone came out. Yeah, yeah the iPhone mm -hmm. came out. Yes. Imagine it's some, recently I was thinking about like imagine how much money Epic would have if they had Fortnite on the iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> And then, like, like, just, like, what do you think mean? about think about that. Just like think about what if Fortnite was on the iPhone. That's cr that's impossible. They can never make no, that happen. That's, yeah. Um, yeah. No. Obviously, like that's the 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 mile marker, right? Is like yeah. oh, smartphones. Just right. smartphones in general, right? Well, just um, like the, to, to showing people that like devices can be agnostic into the point where. Um, yeah, and, you, and you get, get you like sixty percent of the way there, seventy percent. Right, yeah, for, for, right. Like, right, and that's where like uh, you know Gen Z was like, this is the, the primary device I'm going to use most of the time. And for kids, it's like, I why would I ever want anything else? If you're not going to be on my phone, I yeah. don't care about you. That and that, and so that's where the, a lot of these console manufacturers are finding themselves, where it's like it's impossible yeah. to bridge that gap with these new new generations of gamers because they have just well, have no affinity for this way of doing things. As the eldest millennial, I do have a uh, a pretty direct line of communication to Generation Alpha, uh -huh. and by that I mean my Fortnite crew. <laughs> and correct. Can you call them Generation I'm, Alpha whenever you're playing with them? All right, Gen Alpha, let's get in there. Oh, like where's my Gen Alpha boys at? Yeah, Yo, group chat should that's be good. Cool. Um, you have a group chat going? You gotta get not in. yet. They don't. They're not allowed to have phones yet. But listen, <laughs> oh, that's huge. <laughs> <laughs> uh,
it's cool because when I tell them I'm playing on PC, so again, this is anecdotal, but their reaction to that is like I somehow own a space shuttle. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like when I say like no, I'm playing on PC, they're sort of like what? Because the Twitch streamers, like, right, are are all on yeah. PCs and they have yeah. their big powerful yeah. rigs and that feels like oh, well, that's something rich people have. Like yeah. Exactly. I think they I think they see that as some sort of like it's a status symbol, symbol of affluence. Yeah. Um you know, but th they are precious about consoles, though, too. I mean, I think well, most of them have switches. Like, that is the thing. And yeah, Nintendo kind of doesn't count here, yeah. Yeah, for sure, right? But, like, yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I, I find that to be interesting. Um, well, you know, it's a little it's a little hyperbolic to be like, alphas may never care. Like, okay. Yeah, maybe, I mean, maybe not. I think they, they, they probably won't care in, like, the way that we loyalty. do. Where it's like, in, like, a loyalty in like or, the like, default a... mind setting, where it's, like, for yes, me, exactly. gaming is consoles. Even if someone who, like, primarily, yeah. the, primarily right. these days, I'm playing on my Steam Deck, PC, and then some Switch. When I think about games, I'm thinking about a video game console, and I just yep. don't think they're doing that same thing. And right. that's don't going be to be... Don't about the software. Yeah. It's going to be way that, battle. like... Yeah. I, yeah, it's just a different interpretation of, of kind of the same thing. I think it's just, like, the the different way in which you ingest the software right right, I, right. yeah I, and then then um you know i do you do look at these the the dates on this it's like yeah 2007 2008 nintendo was selling the wii and the ds and both yeah. were massive massive successes over 100 million for each and so you look compared to today the switch very successful but it doesn't come close to if you match up both the wii and the three and no. the original ds so it's like yeah and, things have shrunk. And we have to we have to point the finger to Wii U a little bit for that downturn. Yeah, like, we, we, we can't we can't act like it's this innocent platform, right? <laughs> it's got it's, blood it's got on away its with hands. It for it's got blood long. on its hands, exactly. Exactly. Uh, the it Wii... has more to do with the fact that the Wii burned very bright, very fast. Yeah. Yes, that's true. Um, the uh, Wii U and 3DS online functionality uh, shut down yesterday, actually. That's a little story as well. Um, the hell out. Uh, Matt Piscatello had one other point, Sean. Physical mm -hmm. software accounted for approximately 10% of all U.S. video game content spending in 2019. Back in, in, back in 2019. Yes. Well, in, across yes. everything, right? Yes. In 2023, that percentage fell to under 5%. Now, that includes console, portable, PC, cloud, non-console, VR, subscription, and mobile. So you think about all the dollars that people spend. Literally everything. Including mobile, where you cannot get those games physically, right? Yeah. Right. So Maybe yeah. you can't. Yeah, right? <laughs> well, not with this you're attitude, you're right. hard enough. Um, yeah. yeah, I don't, I right. don't know my, a guy. And my, N, my N-Gage games run great. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen an N-Gage cartridge in my life. I've never seen I've either. I've seen the box. I've seen, <laughs> yeah, the, box. I've seen the boxes, but I've never seen the cartridge. I think yeah. it's like a Switch. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's like, it's like a Switch, Switch like an one. SD yeah. card, yeah. Yeah, I've that seen it like right. once in real life, yeah. Ah, uh, so then it's a it's not a cartridge, it's a, it's a card. Never mind, my bad. Uh, if we 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 know this is happening though, it, but I think the reason I bring this up, Sean, is because I think these are the numbers that these companies are actually looking at. I think when oh, we yeah. look at like oh the split between physical and digital, when you put out a game on a console, it's like you know forty percent physical, maybe sometimes fifty percent physical, maybe a little more than that sometimes. It's like they're they're looking at the wider market, like there are dollars yeah. being spent on digital, and physical is like a five percent slice of this overall market. And that's why we are where we are. And to me, this explains right, the whole thing. That's why you get Remedy not putting out a physical copy of Alan Wake 2. That's why you get Xbox not putting out mm -hmm. a physical copy of Hellblade 2. Like, yeah, and that's because it just doesn't make much sense because it won't make them much money. Yeah. yeah it's logical. I and, I, it. and not to, the, the weird thing, right, is that that creates, that creates another business, which is bizarre. Maybe right, or just kind of gets you get let it yeah. run, and I am yeah. I am eight bit doing these physical editions. Yep, which is yep. like if you are going to have a physical edition, I think I am personally, and this is because I'm old and washed, but it's like <laughs> I want it to be nice. Like, like yeah. I think I've moved past the here's a bright fluorescent green box that sure. I'm displaying in my home. Yeah, a I, little I bit. To me, it occupies the same place as like, oh, we're gonna print a thousand vinyl for. Yeah. Oh, it's one hundred percent. That's you know? what. That oh, is. They, yeah, that's literally. Yeah, that's what I mean, we just what, games just skip to that from. right, right away right instead away. of waiting for for physical games to go away for ten years and like, 
what if we started printing vinyl again? And it's like, yeah, no, the, the, they they saw that as an opportunity, and that's one hundred percent what they were going for. And that's yeah. I mean, and all, and there will be a market for that for quite some time, I think, as well. Sure, but I don't, but I don't think that market is more than boutique. I, I no. right, like I don't think that market no. makes a dent. I um, mean, only the truly most perverted of freaks <laughs> spend time, money, and effort hunting down legacy physical media. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I don't disagree. Yeah. yeah. No. Uh, just the biggest right. freaks we know. Yeah. The uh, biggest freaks we know that we, we, yeah, we stand they're yellow labels. Yeah. They're disgusting yeah, yellow like labels. That's exactly. $500. Gross. Cubivores. We're above them. We're above them. We're above them. <laughs> uh, Finally, the last headline I have here says Sean wants to talk about paint. Oh, what? Yes. I like, fucking love news. Like, <laughs> like, like, so this is news adjacent. It is a rumor. Uh, the Twitter account Midori, who you might know as uh, that Twitter oh. account leaking everything Sega. Doesn't yeah. Midori mean? What does Midori mean in Japanese? I think, it's, I think you're thinking Santori time. Uh, from no, I'm thinking Midori. Okay. Like there's like a paper company, Midori. Maybe, anyway, I don't know. I, I believe it literally means green. Oh, um, green. The color which green. Which is interesting here because uh, so this Twitter account often associated with um, uh, Persona News because they have that as like their profile pic. They were talking about P3 Reload before it came out a bunch, but they seem to just know a bunch of stuff about Sega. Like, Grub, when you do GMM, this is like the Twitter account those stories are always talking right. about. Right, I, I recognize it, yes. Yeah, so this account just tweets out randomly, uh, Persona 6's color is green, and which is something we've been talking about, like what's uh -huh. the color going to be for the next Persona game? And the reason I actually want to bring it up is because this interesting rabbit hole I did not know existed about this image that was released for Persona's 25th anniversary, where it's all the characters in front of a wall where they just did graffiti. And you, you can look this up. It's very easy to find because you just look up like the green paint theory or green bucket theory, something like that. Well, there's all these Persona characters standing in line, but then very prominently featured is a paint bucket of green paint. And so people are like, well, that's interesting. Why is there green paint if like all these characters are associated with different colors and they have that on their hands? Why is there green paint? And so people are trying to put one and two together and figure out where this all adds up. This is the wildest shit because apparently they were like, okay, does the order mean anything? The characters are standing in a specific order. Oh, and boy. so like, and yeah. so it's like <laughs> if you if you line up the game with like what the character is, like five, one, something, something, they're like, okay, well, if the paint bucket, if we assume that's the next one, that's six, it's wild because forwards, the order means nothing. Backwards, <laughs> the order of the characters is the hex code. For the shade of green in the paint buckets, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, right. "This is I who figured this out? Who, I'm so who the happy fuck you told this story? Because <laughs> Bacalar has never heard anything worse in his fucking <laughs> life. <laughs> you know what else like, green is? <laughs> fucking grass. <laughs> fucking touch, it. touch it. Okay. First it off, was... I'm not sure you understand what a news <laughs> section is. <laughs> hey, it's rumor that it all counts. It's all good. But anyway, oh, no. yeah. Six yeah. is green. All right. I, cool. I have another final update. Sorry. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Nikki um, is also wearing a green. <laughs> what does it mean? <laughs> what green screens? Uh, um, Jane Ochoa. Um, yes. Uh, at underscore Jan Jerome on Twitter at eleven oh five a.m. Pacific time tweeted in all caps. You've got to be kidding me. We went to Vegas. Jan, oh, he's no! safe. Yeah, he is in Las Vegas. He's taking a selfie. He's wearing an orange hoodie with a black backpack and some noise canceling over the ear headphones. Oh, and he is standing in front of a Wheel of Fortune slot machine. Which is <laughs> the, the one uh -huh. everyone just sits at. They just yeah. sit at these things. Jan, run away. What are you doing? So rest in peace to Jan Ochoa. Oh, <laughs> yeah, wherever he may be. He's going to have a tough go. He might, he might want to drive to SF from where Can he's you? at believe it's like a it's like a 30 minute difference they couldn't have fucking stuck it out for 30 more minutes yeah right like how crucial is the shit situation <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's annoyingly close that's frustratingly close oh i have to land in mccarran and just like Ugh. be in the desert be in like Vegas? that gross Blech. just wanted to 
share the headline here, Persona fans lose it. And it says, as leaks suggest, next game's color scheme. But really just focus on the Persona fans <laughs> yeah. lose it. That's the important part right there. That oh, no, I'm with that you guys. Thing. I think this is wild that people like went through these lengths to figure this out. Like what the heck's all got thing, too much time on your hands. The I appreciate was the, bri- was the bridge too far. Like <laughs> you, I was on board with like, Oh, neato. And then you're like, but if you, the, know, the okay. fucking RGB color coder, whatever. I was like, that is wild. I love the people who did it. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Those meetings in the, over at, Atlas must have been sicko mode to be like, oh, we're gonna make the bucket green, and then if we put all the animes in the num in the order, <laughs> it'll be yeah. they'll be green. Full That's sicko good. Mode. Yeah. Wow. Well, is that it, Grub? That's it for the news. Uh, this show's once again yours, Bacalar. Okay, I will take it from you with my hands. I will place it on the side, and I will let you bring us to break on the other side. We've got some emails. Stay tuned. Oh, here comes you know who. Yabba dabba fruit, delicious do. Oh, ho, ho, I'm ho, ho, hungry. Santa, my pebbles! Your pebbles! Tis the season to be sharing, Fred. Happy holidays, pal. Oh, Fred. Fruity and Cocoa Pebbles cereals, part of this nutritious breakfast. <laughs> Hey, it's emails. Get excited. 
email time. You could play the music. Oh shit! There we go. That's right. Oh shit! There we go. Emails. Emails. If you want to email the show, you write an email to bombcast at giantbomb.com. And then uh, usually Jan Ochoa goes through all them. I have access to them as well, but I ignore them. Um, <laughs> did, did, uh, did you go through these emails or was this, or was this a, a Jan before his flight or wait, something? Oh, wait. Oh, I thought you did this. No, I think Jan might have done it. No, no, no. <gasps> I know it's Jan because these are targeted as we go through these. Uh, okay. what a, There's fucking uh, missile strikes from Jan what? right here. I don't oh, have really? the document. Can yeah. someone oh, send yeah, me the link? Yeah, I, I know, know it's the end of the program. <laughs> Somebody send Nikki the link. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put it in a Slack. little off a couple times. Yeah, no, I didn't. I just fucking raw dog in this. I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> there you go. It's the best way to podcast is to raw dog. Everyone knows that. Um, Thanks. <laughs> I'm excited. Uh, no, the emails are good. I do read emails. I just have a. I, I don't want people to think like, oh, Packler's above reading emails. Number one, yes. He but is. number two, <laughs> um, I, I create a filter. Uh, in uh, the email yes, I, they so all go in a filter on my uh, Gmail too. Yes. So yes. you don't see the bad emails. I don't it's see just, the bad good ones either. Good, but there, are, just, but there, there yeah. are certain keywords uh, that will remain anonymous. Uh, it's hot. Yeah. You no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not talking no. comes through, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, maybe. Now you just have to send emails and see if you can trigger them. Uh -huh. That's the game I'm playing. It's an ARG. <laughs> this is the game I'm, I've made for you all. Um, okay. We're going to get through these again. Bombcast at giantbomb.com is the email address. Uh, let's go to Corey from British Columbia. Corey says, hello, my wife. My wife. My, my wife. <laughs> Eats shrimp tails frequently. <laughs> Jeff Grubb uh, gasping. She thinks it's a good source of calcium. Can we can okay. check that? We can look that up. She'll make us a nice shrimp pasta for dinner and leave the tails on. I will have to pick through my food, remove the tails, and place them on the edge of the plate. It's an actual source of friction in our relationship. Sounds like it. I hate this idea. There may be a cultural component to this since she was born and raised in Japan. But you gotta leave with seems, that. Now I feel racist. It just seems, yeah, that, that just yeah. seems racist. Fuck, yeah. <laughs> yeah, now say. we're fucked. Yeah. I have no idea and out of stubborn frustration refuse to explore further. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's I was just healthy gonna in a relationship. Ask. <laughs> have you tried asking? <laughs> yeah, like talk to your partner. Yeah. Jesus. You gotta just ask. And also, like, you you can either ask or don't get over it this is this is the part about relationships that people forget is that like the up uh, you're with other people and they're allowed to be weird in themselves yeah also for sure for so sure. like unless you're eating the shrimp pasta every fucking day which is probably not true just fucking get over like not to be like get over it. no get over it but get over it Either eat the fine. tails or keep picking them out. Whatever. Or, or talk yeah. about it. Or talk about it. Or talk it. about it. Oh, sure. Yeah. About it. <laughs> so that's the eternal advice. Talk about it. I'm, this is I'm endlessly blown away hearing. Now, again, Corey, you sound great. I'm sure you and your partner have a fantastic relationship outside of crustaceans. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think there's so many people that like don't talk shit out with yeah. their... Significant, yes. uh, significant others, right? I see it all the time. People in the locker room, they're like, oh man, I'm just, I'm not going to say anything. Uh, okay, well, continue to lead your terrible life, friend. I don't know what to tell you. Yeah, yeah. the only not way to make change is to change stuff, you know? Yeah. So you got to. Also, the thing, the thing that this also seems more mind. funny than not. So I, I do realize we're having a laugh here, but go ahead, Sean. This is. The Olive Theory, if y'all remember that sick, like How I Met Your Mother season two reference right there. Yeah. You found the person who will eat your shrimp tails. Yeah. What's the problem? Exactly. Yeah. Go eat your trash. Like, are you calling her like a sh shrimp tail breath or something? Megan Fire? Like, no, you got the perfect give and take relationship. Look, I've I've uh, tried to rationalize the shrimp tail eating thing. As much as I could. I've been as charitable as possible. I've brought the conversation to many groups, circles, uh, 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 friend circles, and mm -hmm. nobody. You, It's unanimously, what? 
It's yeah, not, it's... like no one in their right mind is like, oh, you can eat them or like I only eat them if they're fried like tempura. Mm-hmm. No, nobody across the board is like the, they are. They, shrimp tails are like the fingernails of of this food. Shrimp. They are yeah. fingernails. But like, yeah. like, what are we doing? OK, yes. Could you digest a fingernail? Sure. It goes through the poop. Yeah. Ends up in, know, it ends up in Jan's plane. Yeah. I think I think there might <laughs> Jesus Christ. I think there might just be a cultural thing. It's to a it, cultural. Though, like, yes, I think so. Yeah, the, you know, email our references that their partner is Japanese. I saw just someone like in the Bailey. chat, just like Bailey Myers. <laughs> I mean, you know, California. Uh, hey, but California. Someone, in, someone in the chat mentioned that uh, their Vietnamese friend likes eating tails, and I will say, like, that's the only person in my life who eats shrimp tails. They just like eat the shrimp whole is my best buddy who's vietnamese so yeah all I think right. it's a cultural thing like, so yeah, whatever sean's racist we get well, it um we're racist that's what we get, we're we get it that's not what we're trying to be though um, <laughs> no. so we will keep shaming these cultures for eating the tails yeah, exactly that's the bigger exactly. thing uh, all right there's, some, you, there's some calcium in the tails it. there's a lot of shit in those tails though like protein fiber iron vitamin b literal or what figure oh, oh, when i said the word there, shit what? is that what you meant uh, you know yeah, yeah. That, that's not in there. That was just me being a, a bad swear boy. Oh, um, there you go. Yeah, you go. but a protein, fiber, iron, vitamin B, and calcium. That's that's what's in the tails. Cool. I do love shrimp. Pro shrimp. Uh, okay, next caller. Next caller. <laughs> oh, wrong show. <laughs> no, 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 I was going like, to but... let you sit there. I'm like, I'm not playing a voicemail. <laughs> I can understand, yeah, right. <laughs> what show I'm used to hosting. Uh, I'm a few episodes behind. But I was distraught listening to you all talk about the peak Final Fantasy game in episode 832. In my opinion, it's either 7 or Tactics. No, Jen, not Tactics Advance, you sicko. It's better than <laughs> Tactics, though. So. Where I got distraught, though, was Grub defining peak oh, of cool. a game series. He said that everything after that entry in said series would try to recapture the same magic as the former release, which could only mean one horrible thing. The peak Final Fantasy game was Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> I didn't mean it. And they've been chasing that Mushu Dragon ever since. Why do you think they haven't made a turn-based mainline game ever since? Oh, no. No one from... fucking plays them, as I try to tell Mike Minotti all the time. That's why. That's why everything's an action RPG. But, like, like a Dragon Infinite Wealth is doing okay. What's well? Yeah, listen, I don't want to. Why do you got to put your definitions on my desire yeah. to have more turn based games? Why do you got to put them in a room yeah, like that? Put me in a box. Listen, say put what you will box. about 15. That game sold, man. But, but isn't like, like, like Persona gets be- bigger with every game, right? Yes. But bigger with every game is like, you know, they eventually lifetime get up to like five or six million. And that yeah. was a cultural phenomenon of JRPGs. So why did Kingdom Hearts ruin everything? That's the world. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm kind of happy to be detached from all that. Like I knew yeah. when Kingdom Hearts was a thing, I, I just, I just sort of like, you know, decided to sit it out. I guess. I and I feel like I'm better for it. it. You like know? based on how old I was and what I was into, like I, I should be sick. But I, <laughs> it missed me, and I'm, against that's all why I'm normal. Yeah, I played one and two. <laughs> I'm completely regular. <laughs> when I picked up Kingdom Hearts three. I was like, "Oh, this is a PS2 game in all the wrong ways." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that was from uh, Buddy in Florida. Thanks, Buddy. Uh, okay, next one. We got Jeff from Quebec. Hey, bombers and fighters. You're hired to come up with a name for a new fighting game franchise. The gameplay will be good, but the publisher needs a game title to outshine Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, etc. What's the best possible name for a fighting game? I suggest Shoot Fighter X. The X doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Uh, face Except punchers. Shoot part. You can put any series of words together after they've released in In Night, Underbirth, Rebirth, yeah, two, what's that game point. called? Kiga. You Under got Night it. Inbirth 2. Two. Oh, that's it? This Celeste, I oh, think. Yeah, there it is. There's like brackets and <laughs> such shit. Yeah. So we could, we could, I think we should each give a word that we like in order, okay. and that'll be the name of the game. All right, Backlar starts. Smack. Blood. 
punch. Wet. Smack blood <laughs> punch wet. <laughs> it's in that order. Smack yeah, blood, yeah, smack blood punch wet. That's the name. Well, I guess that's the show title. So uh, <laughs> thank, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Someone, you someone write, write that in the doc for me, please. Yeah, write, write that down. Smack blood smack punch wet. Blood pu- smack blood punch wet. What that's... if there's like a fighting game where you were like stalking like like the darkness of the night or something like that? He called it like okay. Dark okay. Stalkers or something like that. That would be I, I good. Think, Isn't that a that's... game? Mm, not not, not any time recently. Not no. Wait, what was what, what game I think of? It's not a fighting game. It's like an action game from. It was like a TV. You're thinking Dark Siders. Was that was that was Dark Siders? Yeah. Also, like the, uh, three, the, the three horsemen, the four horsemen. Yeah, kind of thing? yeah it was yeah, just yeah. a Zelda game. It was three horsemen. Yeah. <laughs> it was just three. <laughs> yeah. Are you thinking of? Are you thinking of Night Trap? No, I'm not thinking of that. <laughs> no, <laughs> dark side. Yeah. And not that. Is it dark side? I thought it was that is dark stalkers. Is, yeah, Look he's thinking about the dark stalkers. Right there. Yeah. Which is that where Bring Morgan that. is from? Yeah. Yeah, that that's Morgan right there, the other uh, green haired lady. Yeah. Mm. Smack smack blood punch wet is good. <laughs> Yeah, I I would I if I had a game of fighting like game, I would just call it Bloodsport the game. That's why I said blood. Just Bloodsport the game. Oh, Bloodsport the game. Would it be a licensed game based no. on the movie? No, no, no. Oh hell yeah, yeah. It'd be bootleg, but and it wouldn't have any references. I'd, there would be a character that kind of looks like Jean Claude Van Damme if you squinted. Oh, that's what my new is? project is is a Mugen build of just you and Dan Riker, and we're just calling Bloodsport the game. Yeah, yeah. It looks fun to name stuff, game. you know. Yeah. That's yeah, like half of what it. we do here is like, hey, that was a dumb name. We should do that. And that's yeah, right. that becomes it's a true. show. <laughs> it's true. Uh, okay. Next, uh, we have Jacob from Kansas. Hello, undisputed heavyweight bomb squad champions. Since WrestleMania just happened this past weekend, I wanted to ask if the wrestling minute hasn't already been used up. No, I think we actually we haven't hit the quota yet. No. Who was your favorite mid-tier wrestler to watch? Someone who never won the big titles, but was always around putting in work. Mine was the Hurricane in the mid-2000s or Sugar Shane Helms when he was in WCW. I love the superhero gimmick and the theme music at the time. I'm, pro- I'm probably uh, um, qualified to answer this. I think for me, it was like Al Snow. I like loved Al Snow with his uh, mannequin head that he would do in ECW. Sure. Maybe that's, uh, is that, I don't know if that answer qualifies, but he was definitely like mid, mid-tier dude. I don't think he won stuff ever. He was just sort of involved in a lot of storylines. And he was also like not an absolute freak in the way that like you could watch the Sandman from afar and also be like, I don't I don't think I'd ever want to like hang out with that person. Where like Al Snow, you'd be like, Yeah, I'd get a beer with Al Snow. That might be all right. I anyone else? Yeah, I, I really liked uh Raven's Nest. The that the um wasn't that Raven? It was Raven, yes. R- Raven was the leader of that stable, yes. But I like all of the characters in there, including Q- uh, Billy Kidman. I think he was just called Kidman at that oh. time. Uh, big Kidman fan. He was I, He was like wearing jorts even before John it was Cena emo was. Bo- it was like emo boys, right? Yeah, basically, yeah. They had feelings, and then they wrestled yeah. about it. So, yeah. It the was, Flock. They called themselves The Flock. It was right? The Flock. Like yeah, them? yeah. The, that's right. The Flock. That's right. Yes. Uh, and then um, Raven uh, was also kind of mid, too. <laughs> I like Raven a lot. Yeah. I was Raven a was fun. group yeah. right here. Jeez. I um, saw I saw the uh Bubba Ray was that uh Yeah, he did a yes, he reft he reft a match. Yep. That's cool. I like yeah. that. Um my favorite mid carter is like Triple H, like John Cena, <laughs> like those kind of guys. And like they didn't really hit the big time for me, but like I think they'd be put in good work and I think at least a couple of like maybe like the rock. Like mm-hmm. I feel like you might have like a career outside of wrestling if mm-hmm. if you wanted it. Um, Hot take. Yeah. All right, we'll see where that goes. And Sean, you're completely detached from wrestling. Is that true? I don't know what half the words you just said were. It's cool. I mean, look, I mm, who know, mm, I was gonna say that was gonna make some sort of comparison of like who knows more, whether Dan knows more about wrestling or Sean knows more about Pokemon. I oh, it's not pretty good. Close. It's not. You close. know way more. I know way more about Pokemon than he will ever know about wrestling. Than Dan, I said. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, no. I don't know how we this quantify should, it. Is, I know, I don't know, but this seems like a decent. Yeah, that, there's content. something there. Yeah, yeah, there's something it would there. be if we could quantify. I think there would be a battle. Yeah, it was fun to do that thing where, where, where like we say a word, 
And then Mike and Dan had to race to see who could get it to Disney or wrestling faster. That was fun. Yeah, yeah. I just I'm bad at improv, so I lose. That. No, but but oh, this does feel like something though, and it comes from a good place. It's just the spirit of competition. It's yeah, not like yeah. Dan takes competition to a place that gets ugly and awkward and weird and terrible. No, we've never seen no, that ever happen. He's never done that before. I think um, also like there's so so many intricate. Uh, I guess I mean yeah, it depends on how you quantify. Because like, how do you quantify the information that he knows about wrestling? It's like sure, it's names and people and stuff like I, that. It's also I events have, and whatnot. I have something else to posit. What right. about the idea that nothing is fair? Even professional sports aren't <laughs> fair. <laughs> nothing is fair. So why not just do it and have fun, right? Nothing's I mean, yeah. fair. Yeah. yeah, you got points. Let's go. Yeah. For yourself, yeah. man. Let's do it um okay well we've got content for next week i'm looking forward to it <laughs> uh final email Han from the bay area hi y'all why have the backyard games football baseball etc not been remade who would you like to see do it in a perfect world and what would you like to see in that game uh i was ne i never really played these uh, the backer, great. Yeah, Play them a little bit. Who's the who's the like really good player in those games that people have a like uh, Alberto Sanchez or something? Yeah, I, something like that. I, I quizzed you guys on this at one point. Yeah, I can't myself. Yeah, and like uh, like I was watching uh, the Pat McAfee show and JJ Watt was on there and he was wearing a shirt with that character from the backyard baseball game. Oh no whatever. shit. And I was like, huh. I mean, and it just, it was never in my orbit. It must've been like a PC thing mostly, I guess. Yeah. I it was the PC yeah. game thing. These games were great. Like as a child who was alive during and, and the age like that, the target age for these, I think um, these streamed a lot I, for whatever reason. They're really good. The reason why that they haven't been remade is unbelievably boring. Is just that like the company that owns the rights barely exists anymore. So like even if someone wanted to buy the rights, it is hard to find them to them buy the rights from them. Let's just do a clone. That's the thing that I'm confused about is why someone hasn't. It's like a perfect. It screams mobile game to me in like a non derogatory oh, no, way. Point. But it's I was like say like these are you know you may you make like a Kickstarter campaign for a kids game. Well, who's gonna buy that? Most yeah, people Kickstarter are like not for sure kids. So, but you're right. You know, some mobile game adjacent. Yeah, like and they're great. When you Google backyard sports, by the way, giantbomb.com is the second result. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. the oh, wiki. Yeah. Um, the wiki, yeah. Um they're really great. Um, I would I think that EA and they won't do this because they won't, but I really do think that EA should have been the, the stewards of this kind of game. There needs to be a like an or like a game that is maybe above this in the NFL NBA street category. But they don't even make those, and those are great. Yeah, I, I know, which is nuts. Should. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I like, need to come back. Arcade yeah. sports games. Arcade sports games on real devices uh, should come back. Yeah, I, I, I wish yeah. they would get back to it. I, I know they keep, yeah. keep trying stuff that's like, here, it's like NBA Jam. Um, I'm like, yeah, but a lot of times they just aren't good enough. If they were better games, people yeah. would care more. So, yeah. It's yeah, it must, be, it must be tough trying to make one of those games when the, uh, the ones that you are using as inspiration or the basis were so good yes so good yes like the idea of doing a spiritual successor to nfl blitz yeah. is like an impossibility right like it, it almost yeah it can almost exist exclusively in our collective minds like yeah. it can't even be real yeah it would have yeah, to be a very that. specific oh. team making a new one of those you can't yeah. you can't have just anyone doing it apparently on the, their new heights podcast travis and jason kelsey said they were looking into ha who has the rights for the oh. uh, backyard football and backyard baseball games because they want to bring them back and they like they oh, want to be involved. I, I hope they find the guy who did this. <laughs> they pro they <laughs> probably could make, make that happen, right? You just put those characters in there, uh, those, yeah. those celebrities in there, and, and then yeah, and I, Taylor and Swift games are like soundtrack. At such a, they're, so, they're such they're so you would be able to do this correctly, which is to say that like you would be able to get the NFL PA and the NBA PA, like you get these player associations, right? to license the likenesses of the players. So like you would be able to have like a, yes, you would have some kids, but then you would also have these like licensed adults. And I think it would work perfect. Like there's never, I don't know. It seems silly. If this so many things feel like money left on the table, but like 
a sports game for kids seems like a fucking no brainer. I know. I know. Yeah. Sometimes weird shit just like gets left. Oh yeah. Dang dangling for whatever reason. You think, are kids still into sports in the way that they were when these games less came so. out though? A little bit less so. I think overall, but I, I don't think it's, it's true. The participation in sports has trended down for everything except for lacrosse for some reason, mostly because lacrosse was so small <laughs> yeah. that anytime yeah. someone hears about lacrosse, right. it had no place to it, go but up. But yeah. up, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, and then uh, you'll be happy to hear that the coaches, when you ask high school coaches what's happening, they're like, well, there's no reset button in sports. And these kids grew up playing video games. And it's like, okay. Yeah. I wonder why, I wonder why the involvement numbers are coming And down. they always say, they always say reset button too. It's like, bitch, there hasn't yeah. been a reset button. What are you talking about? <laughs> well, right, so old. Like, well, because they were 40 when NES yeah. came out. I like, it like, doesn't even understand what a reset button does. It's like, that's not resetting the stage. That would be like, oh, you're starting a whole new thing. You guys don't know what you're yeah. talking about. Yeah. Yeah. That's very uh, upsetting to hear. Um, I think it's a combination of a lot of things. I also think there's a lot of parents who are fucking disasters. Oh, I'm yes. going to go Sports ahead and disasters. say that. Yes. True. Just based off the anecdotal exposure I've had with soccer and hockey parents, yeah. they need to be hugged. How frequently <laughs> are you like blow like I guess blown away, I guess by like the way that a per- I I can't imagine having a kid at a thing and then being around a parent who like completely is missing the point of your child being in sports. So I will say this. Um, Dib is a hockey and soccer boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it, it, hockey is so wildly popular where I live that you are able to almost position and sort of manipulate the trajectory so sure. that you can find the normal people to That's be huge. With. <laughs> right like there is i will i will say i i hope this doesn't come back to bite me in the ass but there is most certainly a a psychotic level that you yeah. can aspire to where you're practicing five days a week and you're playing four games a weekend and yeah. we the back of our family will not be yeah, participating absolutely. in that right so like and it, but that's the thing like not everyone has the luxury of like being able to find that place, I think. And it's a big turnoff. Like if, if the triple a team is the only team in your area, that's it. That's what you're stuck with. And you're, you're, you, you have to deal with the psychos. Yeah. Um, but I mean, Gary. they're everywhere. You, you, no one is ever completely, uh, sectioned off from all the free. Yeah, nowhere is yeah. safe. Jeff Bacalar. <laughs> it's really, it's really true. Nowhere safe. But you can rest assured you are safe here at Giant Bomb. What do we got cooking and popping off the rest of the week? Yeah, there will be a Blight Club, I believe, tomorrow. Uh, so tune in for that. Super Dan 64 will return. Um, there will be some other stuff popping off probably tomorrow. We'll see Game S mornings, of course, the rest of this week on Thursday. Uh, we're playing Hell Divers 2. We're going to get some Hell Divers 2 going. There's going to be an update for that game. We're going to check in on that, see it for ourselves. Apparently, the machines, the autom- automatons, have been defeated. So we'll go see what that's all about. Uh, and then on Friday, we're going to do the UPF. could be a little bit different. I think I'm going to set up a Fallout game with a bunch of mods and make someone play it. And we'll see how that goes. We're not going to tell them what mods are in there. They're just going to play it and see what happens. So that'll be UPF and we'll have a BCR as well. We'll figure out what that's all about. That was a good one last week, though. I had fun doing that uh, console draft. That always was could, fun, yeah. Always could do another draft, another Mount I won Rushmore. on Twitter, too, by the way. Oh, what's that? Oh. I won on Twitter, too, the poll. Yeah, whatever. End the show. Oh, Turn it off. Yeah, I mean, Turn I can, off, I can delete that tweet, so don't Turn worry. Turn it off. Yep. <laughs> yep. We're also going to dump. We're also going to dump. I believe Kurt and Levine is going to be joining us for the dump hey. truck. This week, we are also going to host uh, a Discord q and It's been a minute since we did one of those. So I believe that's scheduled uh, for Thursday at Thursday. 12.30. I just have to sync up with Jan on that and make sure we're all set. 12.30 Eastern time. Uh, that'll be fun. Come hang out there. That's always a goofy little chat. And yeah, we'll uh, we'll be pecking away at the rest of the week. Dan and Jan should be back tomorrow unless jim is in the back of some pit boss's <laughs> office fighting for his life him and bruno mars hanging out <laughs> negotiating some sort of scout transfer as a means for his freedom 
<laughs> that's going to do it for the giant bomb cast. Thank you so much to Jeff, to Nikki, to Sean. I'm Jeff as well. We'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.